Hey guys, welcome back. This is the Valiant facing up against Atlanta Rain. We're about to get into our second series of the day. I found all the spaghetti hex. I picked it up, put it in the back of my pocket. So <laughs> we're about to get into bro. this one. Yeah. I'm excited. I want to see Rain. I want to see uh, Valiant as well because I think their DPS lineups pretty damn solid if I do say so myself especially last week we saw uh, yeah. Philly facing off against Atlanta baby baby was, uh, him facing off against Carpe was just ridiculous I loved the Ash 1v1 but now we get to see maybe some Ash but we're definitely going to see some Echo I think that's a safe bet there, Jaws. Atlanta's got an embarrassment of riches in their damage dealing line, so they could have someone just grind out a hero while somebody else is grinding out something else, and it's really good. So I'm not exactly uh, certain who, who we can predict to see in. I mean, I'm certain. I have the lineups in front of me here. But, uh, I mean, you could put, theoretically, almost anybody in, in Atlanta on the Echo roll and be completely fine with it. That's how much talent they have on this team. It's actually interesting that their season record is only 4-3, because when you think of Atlanta, you're like, oh, dominant. Like, this team's really good. Year, but the record doesn't necessarily indicate it. The Valiant, on the other hand, I mean, it's it's a new color scheme, it's a new roster for the most part, and you know they're they're struggling a little bit this year. Have picked up a couple wins. They've shown like some great flashes where they'll go to map five against really good teams, but unable to clutch it out. And they also have four very capable damage dealers. So I mean, anything is possible when it comes to these lineups here today. Yeah, that it is. Let's have a look at that Valiant lineup on your screens right now. Let's talk about those DPS players real fast. We got Shax and we have Apply coming in to the roster and jumping into this match as well. And because I feel like, especially with the damage dealers and having such a depth and such a pool, I think it's super important when you're looking at the hero pools in general because you look at Atlanta, you look at Shock, you look at Valiant. Funnily enough, we're seeing them all today. But because they have so many DPS players, it does mean that you can kind of almost focus one person to play a certain hero, and they can kind of grind that in their off um, in their practice time, in their off time as well, and they can become super good at it. For example, Echo. If someone's just grinding that hero, you can just swap them straight in for the week that you know Echo is going to be played. Yeah, probably just since the PTR when she came out. It's like, okay, this is exactly. your job. You're just always on the Echo. I think that's probably going to be a ply, in my opinion. I think Shax is going to play the the other off damage healer, whether that be a Sombra or a Tracer. The rest of this lineup is going to be Dreamer and McGravy. McGravy's just been collecting Ws all week. We'll get into that a little bit later. Lastro and Rain will be the support line. I've been very impressed with Lastro. Rain, um, you know, has an experience under his belt. He's been solid. So, I mean, it, it's it's a team that is not necessarily always getting blown out. Like I said, they go to map fives. They just can't close it. Maybe part of that is just gaining some experience. And once you do it once, you can start to get on a roll. But, you know, the season results aren't that great. But we have this kind of month of May tournament. You start winning, getting some Ws there. If you do well in the tournament, we're adding extra Ws to your record anyway. So it helps getting into the, the grand finals tournament that will happen later this year. Give me W's and you get extra W's later. Uh, so you'd basically Keep put right. down some W's now and then you could potentially win some d a lot more W's later on. It feels pretty good if you're someone like Atlanta Rain though with yeah. the stack lineup that they do have. And I'm going to do it again, Hanks. Let's look at the DPS lineup real quick. We got <laughs> Sharp and we got Ursta. Ursta just a Tracer God. I can't wait to see him play today. We've already seen a little bit of Tracer, but these dive comps are going to be so good. And I think you have the two, uh, some of the craziest DPS players in your, uh, in your starting lineup today to play those compositions. Yeah, I mean, like I said, like Baby Bay is just chilling on the bench right now. Maybe could come in and play some Ash. I thought his Ash was phenomenal. The tank line is going to be Pokepo and FRD. Um, and support line has not necessarily changed for Atlanta since they came into the league. It's going to be Dogman and Masa. They've been mostly playing together the entirety of it. So this Atlanta team, they're very good. I think they're better than their record suggests. Uh, but you have to beat teams like the Valiant if you want to still be considered a top five team, which I think many of the pundits would argue that Atlanta is a top five team, uh, a top three team in, the, in this region at the very least. Let's have a look at the maps that you will be seeing that these two teams play today. First is Control, and first map is going to be Ali Zhang Tower. A couple of maps you can definitely play Echo on. And I guess you could almost argue you could play Echo on Control Center or uh, Command Center. Um, I think there's an argument there. You don't really have to take to the skies. Yeah. And we've seen a little bit of Farah over the years because the choke point is, uh, yeah. is kind of odd in the fact that there's a lot of 
uh, cover for your fire and they have to push into it. So potentially we'll see some echo. We are jumping over to command center first as well. So yeah, nice I think shock. Uh, that's really the the barometer of are we going to see echo on this map? Is like, well, do you see fire on it? Like that's kind of what we're we're basing it on. I think the first time I really saw fire played to a great degree, and this is a throwback for all you guys, uh, was tailspin on on this stage in particular played Fara, and it was showing everybody, yeah, you can just chill up here on the ledge and just beam everyone down. So that's a way way back. But let's get to the now and see what these teams want to run. I don't think we're going to see the Junkrat, but I was actually thinking about it earlier. A Junkrat would be a great duplicate target because you're just going to get tired after like two nades. <laughs> yeah, you instantly get tired. Oh, that'll be kind of uh, kind of crazy. You could probably get two. Obviously, yeah, you have possible. to detonate the first tire pretty quick, but that would be kind of interesting to see. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay, so we are seeing the Echo apply up in the sky. See, this week, you kind of sit, like you were saying, you sit up here with a fire, kind of easy clap. Or yeah, at least you try to uh, just sit on the beat sledge. people from above. He's got, he's got the jump available to him. Is he going to be able to get back to the ledge? Of course he will. Beam him from the back. There you go. Pogbo shield not looking so healthy, but neither is a fly if he's uh, not careful enough. That May is going to prove quite the difficult task to actually kill. FRD can uh, duel him in the air as well. Shaq's TP into the back line. They gotta be able to see him surely. Coalescence from Dogman though to start out the fight. Apply going pretty low. Dreamer the same. They're gonna jump straight onto Apply and Dreamer. There you go. Call outs have been made and the kills come through thick and fast for both teams though. Shaq ends up taking out two. And a Coalescence now for the Valiant. Lastro healing him up when he just teleported to the back line. Still got the Wraith form in his back as well. And he's almost gonna spawn camp people if the rain aren't careful enough. Point still in contestation as we might just see another couple of Coalescences come out. There's the Shadow on the side. Lasso receives the, the beat to stay alive though. Shaq's with a, a death blossom in the back. Can he get it off? The beat from the rain might see him throw it. The boop onto Shaq's as well to prove that he has no damage in front and no business being there either. Apply <laughs> just transforms into the ride. Is this fight ever going to end? Someone hit Q! They hit Q! But Apply <laughs> goes into the shield. We're seeing a blizzard. This is about a 17 ult fight. Finally it ends. The blizzard, funnily enough, was the ult to end it all. And the cat for rain. My goodness, that was a long fight. Yeah, Atlanta not running the Echo on this map because they want to brawl it out. Like I said, there's going to be stages on certain control maps. Uh, like I, in the pregame, I mentioned uh, what, Mecha Base for Busan, where you just want to kind of run brawls. You want to hold doors, you want to hold corridors in some of these smaller outlier maps. Ooh. Opening shatter here. That was kind of big. That call's going to be kind of big too. Good self-destruct though coming through from FRD. Problem is, you are going to go down to those sticky bombs from Apply. Uh, so also falling. Bad news bears for the rain. Apply high in the sky. Shaxx is WM warning like he should be doing. Those sticky bomb accuracy, by the way, from Apply is pretty nasty to yeah. start off with. There's a the beam onto Dogman, and that should just be it. The cap at 40% for rain. It is a Apply's debut uh, this year in the Overwatch League, and he starts it off by putting the sticky bombs in, frying FRD. Wow. Nice. Yeah, I got you. I can't that say was a good. Way. That was a good one. Very good, hey. <laughs> I, I we'll can't tell if you're being sarcastic or not. I'm feeling oh, like fucking me. Oh my goodness, no, <laughs> I'm uh, not being sarcastic at all. That's a lot of damage onto Dreamer. He's in a lot of trouble. He ends up going down to Sharp, and Pukbo now has nothing to worry about in terms of shield. Doesn't need the shadow, though, as Dogman doing what he does best and only play damage, Moira. Shaq ends up falling, and that'll be the rest of Valiant falling with him. That boy ends up going down, and now, guess what? A rain are going to do. They're going to hold the door with yeah. Blizzard and War. Oh, Shaxx, don't take those. Those are headshots. Yeah, holding the door back when that TV show was good. And they're going to be able to just lock this up with a wall, and Erster should be able to get Blizzard during it. Shaxx can apply the damage dealers for their Valiants. They do have a way in, but oddly enough, Atlanta's just going to back this one off. They don't want to get pushed in on by the opposing Lucio. Valiant is banking up ultimates pretty significantly here. The Valiant and try to just watch Doorway. They're in control. They don't really need to push the point. They're playing it more defensively than a lot of teams would. Oh, what was that? Top rope shatter. Both beats come out, though. No one's dying just yet. Although the big freeze coming through from rain. Everybody going down. No way you're going to be able to follow this one up. And the transform into the Diva from Apply. Big self-destruct in the horizon. Maybe he's going to launch out. You might as well. He transforms back. Self-destruct finds absolute nada. That'll be the rain continuing to hold. 90% now building up. Los Angeles Valiant are going to be able to touch at least one more time. We've got Shax over in the server room. That wall's going to block him off for the time being. Someone is contesting. It's it be will dreamer. be Shax as he teleported in. He managed to get it. But now, time is but. 
the window. As we do see Shax and Rain end up going down, there's no way you're going to be able to see through it now. Rain just demolishing the front line. Control center is so painful to play when you have uh, a May to actually deal with first up. The beam to try and kill someone for supply, but you're just going to get forced out. Rather, I say an anticlimactic fight. You saw Shax TP in, use Wraith to get the touch, and that was really it. It's Time is only a concept at the end of it, and you are just going to fall if you don't uh, continue to touch Hex. And so you go against a May, you let her rotate cooldowns, you lose. Yeah, I think they could have played that a little more patiently, too. They lost their supports on the way in, but if they kind of just dance around it, kind of toe tap onto the point, they're going to get tank ultimates up. Unfortunately for them, Dreamer died with the shatter. I, so I was going to say, is like, this has to be Dreamer getting a big shatter during this fight. McGravy ends the fight with the self destruct up. If they're able to just kind of play it a little more patiently, tap around and protect their back line, they may have a chance in that fight because they were going in pretty empty, so they had to wait it out. They didn't end up doing it. We'll see if this is the map that we finally see in Echo on for Atlanta. It is. That makes perfect sense. So yes. we've got an Echo, and that's going to be sharp. Enoch. Nice. We have Shaxx on the Tracer, though, versus Ursta on the Reaper. A little bit more defensive uh, when you do play the Reaper. A bit of damage there onto Dreamer. Sharps just trying to finish this one off, but can't quite get the beam damage down. Hard job for the healers, by the way. Shout out to the healers in the back line for a solo queue game. Just keeping everybody up when they get beamed. Nice little sticky bombs once again from Apply. Like you said, this was his day. This is his debut even um, for the Los Angeles Valley. So he's feeling pretty good so far. He's looking pretty crisp. And maybe it's something, um, something to do with, like I said earlier on, Hex, where you have someone that can just almost specialize in a hero that is so new and just grind it out. Maybe that was Apply's job over the last few weeks on PTR and obviously when it hit live as well. Yeah, I mean, also, the, the Valiant season is not going great here either, and it's, it's not necessarily KSP or KSF's fault, but you want to try something different when you only have two wins on the season, and what better time to try it than the start of our May, uh, May month tournament? Oh, the stick in the back. Oh, that was so Sick. nasty. Master was like, please, someone help me. He's not attached to my shield. Poke Poe ends up going down. That'll be a big reset there for the Valiant. They do at least get a little bit of extra. Sorry, a reset for Rain, sorry. They get a bit of extra time, of course, and uh, a couple of ults forced out on the Valiant side. Last show, you saw their coalescence, and we saw Rain jump in with the Nano Winston, and he just held them one on Lastro, but coalescence, yeah, you ain't going to die, especially with Rain at your back, and kind of forewent trying to jump and damage the tanks and to just kind of end it from there. Duplication available from Sharp and from the rain. We've got a monkey on both sides. Double Winston, we're back. We are back, no hero limits. A right, Overwatch League, you're seeing it right here, right now. Double Winston, double Primal Rage as well, potentially. Sharp unleashes his as well as Apply. Apply finds one, a group of stop onto Dogman's head. Both supports now down for the rain. Bad start for the rain's offense, but Pumpo wins up finding two. The boom off onto Apply and Lastro, the big value from the Echo Alt. A Primal Rage, another one coming in, this time by the real Winston. Valiant is still controlling the point here though, Hex. This could just be 100 to zero. Uh, Gorillas of the Mist as we get four Winstons in the game. I'm having flashbacks of when there were no hero limits at all and you always saw a double Winston on every single control point. But Poke Poke comes in at the end says, let me show you how it's actually done. All for naught though as Atlanta deflected to the point. This is the last fight. Los Angeles looking at 100 0 in. Might look like playing to the apes again, Hex, if they get their oats online. Overtime is in session. That pulse one went a little bit wide. FRD trying to continue to contest this point. They might just cap it. Yeah, they do free. Oh my goodness, Valiant just didn't touch. Now Atlanta Rain are in such a good position. Ah, not so much anymore as Pokepo does end up going down, but they can still hold on for a little bit of extra time. Pokos were going to be able to get back, but the support line is falling. Shax ends up beaming down Shark with the perfect tracking. Self-destruct on point from FRD to try and find some more space, but Apply's coming back with the damage. Ursa ends up falling. The coalescence is going to come out fairly soon, but Dogman ends up getting taken out by Shax. This aim is just insane. The Tracer God is coming up big, and Apply looking so clean on this Echo. They're going to be able to clean the rest of the rain off. OT ticking down the last remnants of Atlanta finally getting cleared on up, and that will be it. The Valiant should be able to take this one one apiece on Li Shang as they just clean up the final members of the rain. Oh my goodness, I did not expect it to go this way at all, but Valiant holding their secret weapons, it felt like, on the bench in Shaxx and Apply. I think it might be a, a, a reason that like maybe those two always play together and maybe KSP and KSF always play together. I'm, I'm not sure that's a question for the coaching staff. But generally, I, I dislike when a team gives up a point for free, but that's the right thing to do in that situation, and it's perfect because 
the the Rainer coming in with, I think, a rally at that point in time from Masa. And the Valiant, no, we only have to win one fight. Let's win it on our terms. Let them use their stuff. The rally's going to dissipate eventually. So, yeah, to have the point. We're going to come back in our single fight win situation anyway. There's no reason to contest if you don't feel like you're in the best possible spot. You don't want to push into a team rallying. So, Los Angeles, like, yeah, have the point. So, it ends up being 117 on the board. It's 100 to 0 in my heart. Yeah, I mean, you only, you only C9 a little bit, but yeah, it definitely was, it was 100 zero basically. They did it on right. purpose, they didn't care to fight that point, like, have it, we're, we're gonna fight when I we mean, want, we need one fight, that's it. Okay, if you say so, I just like my victories more clean, but yeah, that's fine. fine. I think Los that's Angeles fine. will take a victory no matter what condition it's in. True, true dude, they're just looking for the dubs, like a ply has been looking for his queen. Valiant now, gonna have to try and uh, <laughs> deal with Urza in the front line. This is gonna be a big problem actually. This point is so enclosed, Urza's gonna do so much damage. Sharp taken out apply though, good start for the rain. Valiant did end up capping though. Is the rain now gonna take control of the point? A bit of extra 3% basically. They're gonna be able to recontest however. Shax has the pulse bomb right into the back. Misses Sharp by just a hair unfortunately. And Nano onto the Reaper definitely sends Valiant back in. They don't want to mess with this at all. And that'll be the rain finding the cap. Sharp outpacing Apply on the ultimate very easily, but Valiant are going to come storming back in with the Coalescence, but Apply goes down. Again, dude, again. This is the... It's been two kills for Sharp for the time being, but Shaxx and Lastro are going to carry this fight, it seems. Shax in the back line taking care of Fried, and now Valiant just a bleeding rain out. They did manage to cap the point as well, so all this time the rain have been fighting. They are losing capture percent. The uh, duplication did end up going onto the Winston. There's a small invulnerability frame there. You can see when the, the, the change did end up, when he did change back into Echo, yeah, Shax wasn't able to just one clip him down. So Shark was able to get out alive. Shax now looking for a cheeky pulse bomb in the back. Might get spotted out. Oh, actually, I don't think he I think will. I see him. This is a perfect oh, angle for a tracer. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, the pulse bomb. Oh, dog man. No, he managed to get the nade out. It's fine. He might be okay for the time being. Does go for the quick blink melee, but Masa keeps him alive. Brain and FRD end up trading out as they do a Primal Rage, double wins in the back line yet again. His plan's the H number two. We're on map number three, and uh, we got another wins of Primal Rage. I can't really tell what's happening. All I can see is monkeys just jumping around. Dreamer ends up getting beamed down, and there will be Dogman falling as well. A mobile Ana, unfortunately, ends up falling, but Sharp takes the skies once again as Apply ends up falling. Now Valiant just jumping onto the point once again, just continuing to hold. It feels like they are just so good at scrapping these fights out. Sharp's trying to match them in that by jumping on the back line as well, but getting little to nothing done as Apply almost ints himself onto Dogman, knowing if he gets the kill and trades, that Rain have only Master to back them up with the heat. Well, it's down to it for Atlanta Rain if they don't want to lose this first map to the Valley, but another huge bomb! Oh, Master ends up going down. That's a big blossom straight on top of the grab. That's what you like to see if you're a Rain fan. Oh dear, Shax was slept as well. They do have to touch, mind you. They are touching just now as 99% will be in the bank for the Valiant. Sharp and all oh, the duel in the skies. Ends up taking out Apply. Sharp is definitely winning these 1v1s, but Apply playing for the team more often than not here. Yeah, doing a little bit better on that, and it's another situation very much like the last point of this map, that the Valiant are at 99-0. to zero. They're going to get off of the Echo, of all things. They just rotate pretty seamlessly into a brawl composition. Shax, Applied, Dreamer, all switching heroes means they're going to be behind in ults. This might be an eco push, but if, if you get an early pick, you press the point. An eco push without an Echo, unfortunately. <laughs> Fire grenade was disgusting. Oh my word. Dogman got 80 percent old charge as well for that too. Lashro gets instantly deleted as he soon to use the coalescence. Sharp now just cleaning the rest of them up. The rain with a very, very good team fight straight off the back of that nade. One nade can win a fight. It's just uh, so good. And it feels so good as well when you hit those uh, big bar grenades. Everybody lights up purple. No bubbles either to cleanse. And Lastro, unfortunately, there, I'm not entirely sure if he had shift. He used the cold, but he was still unable to heal himself, which kind of sucked. Yeah, you're getting stuck with just a, a little bit of pulse bombs there. So I can imagine that he must not have had his his fade away out of it because you, you don't want to take that sticky bomb damage which he did speaking of that damage the man who applied it is sharp and he's going to have yet another duplicate ready nano on the ready as well very likely actually might go into frd here to try to get a grab and shut this one out poco's like got his ultimate you don't really want a nano of primal winston 
you nanoed <laughs> the Zarya. Nice little counter pin there coming through. That does mean you're going to get frozen up, Sharp, and probably taken down rather rapidly. I say that. He ends up transforming back after his clone got killed, and he ends up getting back up alive somehow. And that Graviton surge in the front line as well. The Rain have just come back through in this one. It looks so good for the Valiant. They had the Blizzard. They had everything they needed. But Atlanta Rain beating them to the punch end up taking Lee Sharp. I mean, we're trying to get used to this new hero, Echo, and it's going to be a little bit of growing pains. Did he nano the duplicate Rhine? No, he nanoed. Did he nano FRD? Okay. Yes. He nanoed Zaya. I, I need to go. Zaya just beaming people. I need to go back but, um, and look it, at it. It was those invulnerability frames actually came in so handy there. Um, like I talked about, uh, about halfway through that map, he was Ryan, and then because he got a beautiful counterpin, by the way, from the Valiant to keep him inside the Blizzard, and then he got frozen, taken out as the Ryan. The invulnerability frames came through when he was transforming back. He was still frozen, but still managed to get away because the Blizzard ended up running out, and then he was able to press shift. He jumped up in the sky and was then free to do whatever he wanted. It was, it was perfect focus from the Valiant, you would have thought, but because there was that small delay in him transforming back and them not being able to actually take out the Echo, they couldn't really turn around the fight because FRD was nanoed and then he ended up getting grabbed and then grabbing everybody and then Pokepo came in. It was it, it was a fight that could have literally gone either way in that very precise moment. Yeah, what I do like about new hero releases, and this happens almost every time, is that we're going to have... Uh, different things coming in, but like also these compositions have switched. We haven't seen like mirror metas and teams are switching on the fly. Echo's forcing that and then people are going back to Echo. And then you're just seeing a composition which is, well, it's against the rules, impossible with four Winstons <laughs> on the field at the same time. Like it's, it feels like a brand new game at the moment. If it's also, yeah, like you said, the players are gonna have to get used to this. So we, like, like you said, seeing four Winstons like who Primal Raged? Like, yeah. I normally listen for the voice cues. Like, it's probably the easiest way of telling what alt is actually going off. And it's like, uh, Primal Rage, Primal Rage. Primal Rage. It's like, wait, who did what now? <laughs> like, it's insane. It's hard to keep track of for the players, I can imagine, as well. Because, like we talked about earlier, with the pressure that you're amounting on the bat line, if you transform into a tank, it's like, okay, so he's going to have ult, basically, yes. But then the other Winston's got ult. Like, it's... It must be a nightmare in comms for a support I mean, player that's calling. I just can't wait for some of the, the shenanigans that are going to happen from this. Of like, you get two Winstons, right? They find a Zen and just bat them back and forth like volleyball, oh, right? No. It's like, here you go, here you go. Oh, that would be hilarious. In fact, I think we could have some new uh, custom game shop modes where you have Winston Zen volleyball, right? You put like a Symmetra barrier in the middle or, you know, so like a line of uh, Orisa shields and then you just keep bopping the metal balloon over. Not only are we delivering you amazing <laughs> casting, we're delivering you amazing ideas for Workshop. We're going to jump to a quick break, guys. Do not go anywhere. That was map number one. Map number two coming up soon. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League.
The Overwatch League is brought to you by Cheese It Groups. Deep flavor, deep crunch. It's a mind crunch. What's up, guys? Welcome back. That was the rain taking Lijiang Tower. Going 1 0 up in this series so far. We've got Hollywood to jump onto next, Hex. Yeah, and uh, a lot of jumping indeed will very likely be done if we see any Winstons on the field. That was uh, just the first glimpse of some of the many chaotic things we will very likely be seeing with our new Echo hero. Um, I like the chaos. I, I'm always a fan of, of chaos, uh, especially when it's happening to other people and I don't have to deal with it. So it's very entertaining to watch from afar from the safety of my North Hollywood apartment. That was fun to look at. Um, yeah, Atlanta, right? But this is closer than I expected. It really is. It's much closer. I thought Atlanta was going to come and beat them down, but the Valiant look really good at the new DPS line. Yeah, they've been almost thriving, I think, in the chaos, uh, that chaos factor. Yeah. It definitely felt like that some of the time. And someone's been thriving on Twitter as well. McGravy's got a pretty good tweet game, I must say <laughs> so. And uh, he's been having a little back and forth with Halsey, quite a famous pop star. I'm sure most of you know who she is. And uh, his beautiful diva cosplay is something to behold. And I wish I had the figure like... McGravy, that's for sure. He needs to share his workout routine, I think, with a lot of us, because uh, I want to be that jacked. Give him the crown. Collecting W's right there, man. Not bad for a fast food style gravy. I will give him that. Well played, sir. That's that's going to go down in history. That's something that like he'll always remember, I think. That is a See, sick See, that's how you flirt on Twitter. Dress yeah. up as Diva in I mean, a bodysuit. You know, and McGravy, like, yeah. look where I got him, okay? Yeah, don't He's be the king. We all need to aspire don't, to be. Don't be simple. Put in some effort, right? Perfect. <laughs> perfect. Lead by example, McGravy. <laughs> well, let's get back into the game talk, though. Hollywood, I want to see more Echo. And of course, we're going to see it. And like you said, this, this series is actually a lot closer than we thought it would be, right? Yeah. Because Valiant recently, in recent times, haven't really shown us that much, to be honest. And going up against the rain, I think we all kind of thought, you know, before it happened and it got um, teed up for the for the beginning of the day, it's like, wow, I, I don't think they're going to be able to take a map. But they were very close to doing that. And I think it's because Apply, his debut game, by the way, has just been so good at actually dueling out in the skies. And to go up again, to have a debut game against a team like Atlanta is something else. Like, that is a very very tall order and he's been showing up just massively already so props to him for not having obviously staged yet as well coming into it your first official game yeah a, a great debut against the the team which had it the, i think in my opinion the best debut of uh in an expansion franchise in Season 2 in the Atlanta Reign. Uh, they came in swinging there. There are going to be a few changes on the field. The Atlanta Reign are going to sub out one of their DPS in Erster, and they're going to put in Edison instead. Like I said, an embarrassment of riches for this Atlanta damage line. I don't believe I see anything on the board for the Valiant. No, I think that they're going to probably run this six all day. I just have that feeling for it. Pokepo and FRD are going to stay in for the Atlanta Reign as well. FRD is how we say his name on broadcast. I know what it used to be. That's what it says on screen. Deal with it, Twitter. <laughs> Sorry. Wow, Sorry. Hex no, no, I'm chill. Today, I'm chill. Bro. No, no, I'm cool. Man. I'm cool. Are you cool? Are you cool? Okay, good. <laughs> good. That's what's on screen, okay? Yeah, it's what Let it says me, me, me. on the screen. I'm sorry, I'm reading the it letters says, on the screen. We have a third, we have a ksp, and we have a ksp. He could, he could have easily, you know, he could have easily made his name Fried if he wanted to be called Fried. True. There's no rules. Furred now. Furred? Furred. Furda. Furda boys. That sounds like a, a Norwegian word. Furred. Nah, Furda, it's Furda boys. Come to the Freljord. You're thinking of Fjord. <laughs> Fjord. <laughs> All right, there's, a game. there's a, lot, a game yeah. here, Jack. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? I'm going to get my Norwegian dictionary from upstairs in the middle of the, in the break. That's a lot of damage. Apply doing a fair bit. Dive onto the high ground. This is where Apply wants to sit. Dogman has just been uh, so good at actually kind of dealing with Apply. It's one of the best things about Arno being able to deal with a Faro. And obviously now Echo, who uh, takes the skies rather regularly. There is FRD. Still on this Zion. More protection game for anything else. Apply with that laser beam straight onto Pogpo. Like I said before, it's actually really hard as a healer to actually heal your uh, teammates through that. It feels like you have to use Bio Grenade on the target and then just spam them with heals. Sharp playing a, a bit more of a safe game as well, holding the 
High ground near the double doors. A dive onto the back line for Shax as FRD ends up going down. That Coalesce is doing a whole bunch as well. Beautiful stick by Edison though, finishing off Rain. One support each now for both sides as he ends up getting taken out. This is a back-to-back, -back. like this is the, the biggest trade of the century. Shax gets a beautiful kill into Dogman. Sharp's gonna get finished off as well. Shax, Tracer God. Yeah, and it was just happening. It was happening everywhere. Oh there, was, there were fights all over the match. It was not a 6v6. This is like the anti goats meta. There was like a 1v1 in every little pocket of this 1v1, map. 1v1, 1v1, 1v1. Yeah, exactly. But I think this one, if our first match of the day is any indication, this point in this map actually might come down to who's the better tracer. Pulse bomb out. Ends up going a little bit wide. Sharp has uh, the ult now, though. Same with the ply. Who do they copy in this situation? It's going to be Winston again, I can imagine. I can't, imagine, uh, I can't believe we'd go for anything else. There you go. There's one. Where's the second? There's two. Part of the Apes three. <laughs> Dog man at the back. And they're getting jumped on, although a stun will make sure Apply can't get much damage done. Edison takes out Rain, which is a good start. Apply with a primal rage, pushing everybody back into the Valiant squad, trying to put them into the meat grinder. Dogman still being kept alive by FRD and Massa. Beautiful support lineup coming through from the range, just making sure Dogman stays alive in his time of need. And Edison now cleaning everybody up. This payload hasn't gone all too far. As Shax is getting uh, burnt out by Edison. This is going to be the big problem here is getting through this small choke, especially when you have Arna sitting so far back, the heals can be just too much for some time for you to deal with. Yeah, there's no Ryan to just really sit around the corner here, so you can actually play out a little bit out in open space. This one's just really gonna depend on where the next pick goes in. Rally comes out though. Oh, yeah, Seacord Rally. I'm really Stand. looking at this grab. Where is it gonna be? There it is in the front line. Pulse Bomb in the back. Couldn't quite eat it up. That's a lot of damage. That was a big nade as well from Dogman to make sure they couldn't get healed uh, via the Coalescence. A primal Rage and Winston in the back is the real one, do not worry. <laughs> yes. Dreamer feeding his health bar towards the Atlanta Reigns uh, ult flank. Oh, he doesn't end up going down though. Edison trying to snake his way in but can't quite find the blink and the melee to finish off Dreamer and he gets healed up. It's an interesting composition that Alan is running with FRD on the Zarya. You didn't see much Zarya from the APAC games on this patch. I think a lot of it is the utility to keep Pokpo alive. Um, in case he jumps in and gets shielded out by the other team, also allows you to have Sharp go really aggressive into the back lines and try to maybe get a duplicate off uh, on a hero that he wants instead of just trying to pick whichever one's available. Shaq's having a duel out all some more with Edison. They both almost have post one online, by the way. That's a big stick in the back. That's a lot of splash damage, but the bubbles from FRD didn't eat most of that. However, he hasn't got one left, so he's trying to focus him down, apply now on the tracer, can he get a pulse bomb? Can't quite aim on the front line on the heads, does get the recall off, 80%, he's got to get it! One second left, he's got the pulse, he throws it out, goes wide, doesn't end up killing himself with it, but he's done the damage that he needed to. I think that's why, that's case in point, why you copy one of the tanks to, to begin with, really. Apply ends up taking down FRT, but again, Hex is, a, like I said before, and I'm going to say it again, it's a 1v1, v1, 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 v1. <laughs> v1. Yeah, this, this fight isn't really a six on six. However, Apply took a good job of protecting his back line as the soldier struck does end up taking down Dogman. So, Atlanta Rain now on a clock to try and uh, stall this pain out for longer. Massa ends up going down. Soon as you lose your main healer there, it's uh, as good as over. I just have a really important question. Can we call two tracers on one team uh, total recall? Can we do that? Yeah, we can call it that. Okay. Right. okay. Coming up with comp names on the spot. I like it. <laughs> what is Shaq's going to do here? There's so much like uh, negation, which is going to be the big problem, I think, for uh, for Shags. He's got pulse, but you can see it got. Look at that! Look at the look at the peel! Oh, <laughs> the interrupt! Oh my Feels goodness! Bad. The frame perfect. Master ends up interrupting Shags' ult. No pulse bomb. There's a pulse bomb though, and a grab right on top of each other. There's some Pokebo Master clean that one up. Beautiful combo, and that'll be it. The, uh, not the quite the big bang that we're kind of used to with the self-destructs, but Pulse Bomb will do dirty. It's the worst place in any map to lose a fight is right there, because now the walk oh, yeah. back means that this one's going to be the very last fight. Seems extremely likely. Like I said, Atlanta just has way too many damage dealers for anybody's good, because if you remember, Erster is one of the best tracers. It has had amazing plays, highlight reel plays as well. They take him out, and Edison just starts crushing as well. It's like, come on, guys. Is there anything that man cannot do? Edison getting checked on the side. He has Cole. Mass has that rally though. It's going to be a good tool to stop a fly really from doing anything when he uh, does choose to ult. But the question is, what's the ult? That's the question. It's got to be Winston, surely. There's one Winston, there's two. Planet of the Apes 5.
<laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, we're not even, we've not even reached the end of the planet in the eighth series in real life, so we can just keep it going. There's the rally, like I was talking about. That's going to stop a lot of that damage coming through. They're trying to jump onto Dogman. The Primal Rage going to knock him up into the air, but those armor packs are clinging, and he's kept himself alive for the moment. The Master doing still a good job. Dogman's still not dead. Atlanta Reign's appeal for him is just crazy. Edison does end up going down in the front line, though, to Shax, who switched over to the Reaper. Now they can push forward onto this gate. Oh. The line ends up getting taken out on the sides by Sharp. And can't, uh, McGravy can't quite end up trading. Uh, Popo ends up falling as well. McGravy with the self destructing in the corner. Well, oh, that payload needs to get uh, needs to get touched by Rain. Touch. Edison ends up grab. getting back in there. Rally almost available for Master to keep him up. No, he ends up getting taken down by Dreamer. A Graviton Surge right on top of the monkey. A Bio Grenade to finish the kill off as well. The Rally for Valiant on top of the Coalescence. Knowing no one is going down just yet. FRD ends up getting focused out by the support of the Valiant. And now it's a slow bleed out for the rain, you've got to say. The stick onto Lastro is going to be good, but can they keep the pressure on? Shax and Apply doing the damage needed, though. Only one more meter remains before they end up capping the second point. <laughs> the Beyblade on top, why not? Just to finish off the fight, as Shax ends up cleaning up. And there we go. After about 30 seconds of all-out warfare, <laughs> they managed to take the second point with a minute and 20 seconds getting added to their time back. Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and say this is this is definitely the antithesis of goats because these fights are going on forever and you don't know which way it's gonna go. It's given scrappy. It's not decisive. It's not like oh well this this team happened and now it's a, it's a full wipe. Because a lot of times in Overwatch, if you lose one person, that's it. That's the end of the fight. Uh, you're, you're getting six v five. You're getting body. You're getting rolled in. If you lose two people, it's definitely over 100 percent of the time. It has not been the case with Echo in here. Sharp, Winston. gonna go bananas again. He's on the Winston. Not getting much done here, unfortunately, but he has got a primal rage. He's got to be careful, though. I mean, you are charging Shaxx's uh, ult charge at this point. He's going to find one. Oh, dear. Who's this? Oh, it's another Zaya. Okay, so we're going to see another Zaya on the field now. Apply. Look at that ult charge, by the way. Just focus your eyes on the top left. 76% already, 80%, 90%. He's got a grab, and now you can just throw it on him. FRD is going to get caught up. Pokemo narrowly avoids it, but probably would have wanted to jump in to try and save FRD. Him falling is going to be bad news as Pokemo ends up getting focused down. Valiant now have 20 seconds to net the payload onto this third point. Dogman is going to be have to be a little bit more careful than that. Can't quite come out just yet. He's got the Nano and the Tanks and Earring Ults as well. I mean, I love that use of the sticky bombs too, is to put it on the right side to force Dogman away, try to use it. I mean, it's such a good zoning tool as well. Last fight, should be a Shaxx blossom. On top. This one. Look at the blossom, he's gonna have it, Hex. There it is. Doesn't need to use it though, to kill Pokpo. Edison takes out a fly, and now it's all on the supports to keep everybody alive. A rain ends up falling, but it might not matter all too much as Dogman and Edison are still alive. There's someone's got a touch though. Edison uh, Sharp is so close to up, but gets run over by McGravy. The thrusters kill him off. And just like that, the Valiants will cap the third point. Not with any time in their time bank, but for Hollywood, just capping third isn't too bad of a start to this map. Yeah, able to finish that one off, and I, I think there's... I've said this since like week one of this year, though, because Valiant came out a lot stronger than people thought. It's it's a, a pretty much a brand new team. They went with young, um, proven at their level players, but young, unproven at the out level players. And now it's starting to come together. You get Apply in here. It's, debuting in the Overwatch League, maybe shook up the nerves of that first map, which was really close. And this Atlanta team has not looked dominant. And I think that's what we expected coming in, that we, we had this presumption that the Atlanta Reign was a dominant squad, that they're always high ranked. I've talked about how good and how deep this team can be, but the upstart Valiant are putting on a bit of a clinic here uh, with their DPS play. Shax and Apply probably ranked like third and fourth, and, and if you just look at the depth chart of damage dealers on the Valiant team, are playing really, really well against Sharp and Edison, who you would rank at the top of the league in damage. So having just a great showing, and I think the Valiant are starting to gain confidence as this series goes on, and I'm not certain of everyone's predictions right now. But I love an underdog. I'll always root for an underdog. Yeah, Americans do love an underdog story, that is for sure. We I mean, let's be real with ourselves, though. The boys, my fish, did end up predicting the rain to win, so they're probably going to take the W. I know they're uh, very much into Overwatch. They do watch every single one of my ranked games as well, which is uh, a little bit disappointing because I lose a lot. Valiant now on the defense. I like the way Sharp's playing, by the way. It's not like instantly taking high ground because you can get forced out so early, especially if you're um, if you're not keeping an eye on where McGravy is. He does so much work against 
the Echo, just denying so much of that damage. Popo now on the high ground himself is going to get chased off, though. Yeah, trying to uh, tickle down a Brigida in effort and futility. Good position here, and that's, apply. Yeah, that's kind of a Someone heal apply, please! Like, he was uh, at the back there for so long, just getting chunked out by Edison. Edison, the seven clip wizard, managed to take out Apply. <laughs> I mean, uh, at that point, you've got to wonder really where your supports are. Rain and Lastro are uh, going to have a, have a very, very hard time dealing with the tanks. FRD ends up picking up two kills. Lastro ends up getting slept, forced to use the fade. He is so low. Dogman takes him out. And Rain just uh, with a steamroll over. Just having Apply going down so early, you just lose so much pressure. It was weird because I thought I saw Lastro just walk past Apply uh, in, in a weird situation. But it's nice to know me and Edison have something in common, that it takes us both seven clips to kill anyone. <laughs> I'm being, I, by the way, that was a joke. Uh, <laughs> just to put that out there, he, he isn't really the seven clip wizard. He is extremely good on the tracer. I, just I to make everybody aware, yeah. I don't think they did. There hence. are some I'm, I'm people who take the everything literally. There are, there are some Draxians out there. Well, uh, British sarcasm doesn't land all the time, so uh, I will uh, just put that out there, just as a disclaimer. <laughs> we might have uh, another Planet of the Apes situation on our hands. Sharp has alt, Apply is closing in on his. There you go, there's two Winston, so three on the field. Primal Rage gonna get built up rather quickly. Pokemon is actually already using his. FRD does have the ult as well. That Graviton Surge is going to result in a lot of damage heading to the front line. Oh my good lord! Primal Rage into Grav. Winston, Winston, Winston's just trying to get as much damage as they can down. It I was... love, by the way, this Zaya pick. It's yeah. just working out so well for them. And they're able to combo so much damage with it too. Sticky Bombs and the Pulse Bomb as well from Edison or just the cleave damage from the Winston. Yeah, there's nothing to really stop it. And it was Primal Rage into Primal Rage into Grav into Nano into Rally. Atlanta used a lot. If they didn't How win that lose? fight, it would be uh, it would be pretty disheartening if you were a Rain fan if they hadn't won that fight. But now they've got Edison with the pulse bomb looking to end this fight before it starts. He's in the back lurking for a pulse. He not even popped it yet. He's just poking around. Oh, there we go. Another one. Shaq's up on the high ground as well. Beautiful uh, double dive there. A death blossom doing so much damage too. That bubble actually stopped a little bit of healing going on to uh, FRD. So. It wasn't too bad at all. That die forcing people off the high ground as well. Oh, a fly's slept to the back, but here's Echo after all. Ends up getting back up to full fighting force. I say that, he gets dominated by Sharp with his sticky bombs, but they're very, very quick spawns. As long as you don't lose Mech here, McGrave, you should be okay. See, Lastro just yeah, he desperately trying to keep him alive. He doesn't have the juice. Oh my goodness. And that nade as well actually land onto Lastro. He can get focused down almost instantly. That nade was so good from Dogman. Dogman is just performing just out of his mind right now. These bio grenades just landing on the perfect targets. Although Shaq Supply is still in this fight. Don't count them out just yet. Sharp changing into the Winston to try and bat everybody away from the payload. They've only got a couple of meters remaining in order to actually get this cap on second point. They do just that as Rima and Shaq end up getting cleaned on up. Rain now with four minutes in the time bank. It hasn't looked quite the same as I expected, to be honest. We talked about how the fact these teams look so close right now, just Valiant's defense, and I think Sharp right now has got a little bit more of a read on apply uh, than he had previously. I, I think the Valiant are having an issue with healing output right now, and it's I think it's Rain the player, not the team, being pretty uncomfortable on this Brigida. You see Lastro was out of juice, but that's because he's had to heal everybody and not able to get any damage to get more of the healing power for himself. And early on, on the first point, there were healing issues as well. The Valiant need to clean this up. Maybe it's because they're working with new DPS that they don't know necessarily where they're going to be all the time. Oh, big grab coming up. They can get the grave. Yeah, Mech, yeah, he just wants to be safe and sure that he will actually land this grab. Apply is just going to get mown down. As with the rest of the Valiants, three minutes on the clock too. Remember, if they do finish with more than a minute, Hex, they get a free attack which seems somewhat inevitable at this point when you've got Pulse Bomb and Grav, one of the best ultimate combos in the game, as long as it doesn't get gobbled up. Rally. Rally. Double rally. Someone change into a brig to make it quad rally. That would be kind of entertaining <laughs> in itself. FRD still holding on to this grab, looking at McGrady's defense matrix. There's the Winston. They know they need to kill FRD. That Coalescence even heading towards him as well. The amount of pressure on him is just kind of negated by the fact that there's so much 
Shaq with just constant support on his back. Shaq ends up going down to get solo grabbed in the front line, as well as Double Winston's coming out yet again. Self-destruct onto the point. Edison's going to be able to dodge it for the time being and now focusing down the supports. A beautiful stink on a fadeless Moira. Ends up taking down Lastro and Rain now continuing their snowball as Dogman sends out the Nano as a final hurrah to the Valiant lineup. Shax and the rest of them end up going down in 2 minutes and 20 seconds in the time bank for Rain as they grant themselves a free attack on Hollywood. No way Atlanta can lose this map now. They can only draw, but that would kind of feel like a loss in this situation. 227, two pushes, maybe a third, uh, given how chaotic and how long some of these fights have gone up, probably only two in this instance. But when you have an opportunity to only need 33% of the map, it feels like a loss if you don't pull it off. So the Valiant are going to try to keep this series at 1-0 in our second map. And I think they, they're they playing the composition everyone else is playing, but I, I, this is just a guess. I'm not certain that Rain is super comfortable on the Brig. The healing outputs have been lackluster and that caused them issues on the first point and on the second point. I could definitely talk lengths and lengths and lengths about healing compositions and actually what they end up doing for you in certain situations and I love the adaptation here from yes. Lastro, he's jumping over to the Ana because with the Moira, like you were mentioning before Hex, and rightly so, the, the juice, the healing output from the Moira can only be sustained for so long before you have to stop healing, doing damage and only sending out healing orbs as well. Yeah, well and with Rain, you have to be in a brawl all the time and you're having to wait for those armor packs to recharge too. So exactly. the consistent healing value from the Ana is way better in this situation. That, that's the thing is that like, Brigida is really good uh, at enabling dive and then staying with her tanks and swinging away to inspire and keep alive. And Moira is really good at staying with her team and kind of alternating left and right hands so you can refill your meter and come back. But you have no consistent healing and especially the way that uh, these compositions are playing out where there's brawls everywhere. You're just going to run out of armor pack and run out of juice sometimes and then you don't have the, the orbs when you really need that healing at the last second and the orb is also your self heal too as Moira so I don't like that composition of Brig and Moira together I don't think we're going to see either team go back to it. Yeah I don't think so either a lot of damage uh, heading towards Pokemon. Again, I really like this uh, side pick. I hope they do pick up on the desk because it's really worked out for them so, so well. Pokepo now onto the high ground, pressuring the point is there. Aim of the game currently. Big fire grenade actually uh, from Lastro to keep the front line alive. Dogman ends up taking out a fly though, and now the slow crumbling of Valorant potentially as we do see Valiant once again forced in a situation where they need to look three different ways. Dreamer ends up going down as McGravy also ends up falling. There's half of them were on one side of the map, half of them on the other. And Valiant end up falling as Rain just take that 33% that they needed. And now Valiant, well, they need to come back in a two, uh, in a reverse sweep fashion. Rain just um, piled on the pressure and almost, I felt like, got the read on how the Valiant were playing. Yeah, and you're absolutely right. I love this Zarya pick. She's such a unique hero, had so much versatility, and uh, Zarya can find her way to fit into the dive. And also, Zarya can be a little bit self-reliant, not necessarily calling for heals right away, lends itself to a brawl composition, lends itself to keeping the Winston alive. You think of Zarya and Reinhardt working well together, and D.Va and Winston working well together, but Zarya can enable the Winston too, as long as she doesn't have to take high ground with the Winston. And now with Echo in the compositions, Tracer with the compositions, you don't have to have both tanks in there and getting it done you can have the tank in the ground and that's also enables Masa to stay alive and there's there's a lot of things that the Zari has enabled that has worked out really well for the Atlanta Reign as they take a 2-0 lead over the Los Angeles Valiant the Valiant all year have shown signs of being really good flashes of brilliance but they need consistency like I said a young team just trying to find their footing well, we'll have to wait and see how the series does turn out. The Rain are up 2-0. Can the Valiant come back with a clean three wins in a row? We'll have to wait and find out. We'll see you guys in a sec. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Helping you stay connected to what matters most. Learn about T-Mobile's COVID-19 response on T-Mobile.com. And by State Farm. For auto, home or renter's insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there.
and all to a game break presented by Pringles Wavy. I am Zoe. Joining me are Costa and Reinforce. And currently, the Atlanta Reina are up 2 and 0. Oh. However, it was not such a one sided affair as the score might suggest. Let's discuss what we just watched. Uh, starting with the Valiant here, Costa, Apply had his debut performance for this season. What are your thoughts on him and Echo? Yeah, I think he's been pretty solid on Echo. It's it's kind of hard to really know where the, the level or the bar for Echo is right now because it's so new. But he sees. Well, you called it level three. Out yeah, of he might be level four now. now. Uh, <laughs> you know, we're, we're slowly getting up there. You know, uh, but he's he's been solid. I also want to talk about Shaxx on Tracer. He's always been an incredible Tracer player. I played with him back in the day. He's always been awesome. He's going to you know toe to toe with Edison right now, who is also a phenomenal Tracer. So it's actually been very even. The main difference that we really saw, especially on Hollywood, was the Zaya pick from FRD, and it really seemed to pay dividends for them, especially with their grabs. They were getting team fight win up team fight win with those grabs. Yeah, it's been a bit of a back and forth series. We saw both teams come out of control center and they actually didn't play uh, Echo at all, Atlanta Rain that is. But then we saw Sharp pick it up and I'm gonna be honest, I don't have the insight as to why they put Sharp on Echo. Maybe he's just a superior <laughs> Echo player on this team. Maybe it's because of flexibility reasons. They want Erster or Edison to flex around a Sharp and let Sharp play that Echo. Maybe they just had Sharp play the PTR and practice Echo before everyone else. So there are multiple reasons as to why they could have played Sharp on that Echo. But yeah, I do like the Zarya pick as well coming out from SR FRD as you mentioned. And as we also talk about the Echo matchup, of course, Sharp and Apply, they have been pretty even, Costa. And I know that you like what you saw coming out of apply even though they're down 0-2. Yeah, and you see the stats sort of showing he's a little bit worse, but that's generally what happens when the team is losing. But for the most part it's it's been pretty even for both these you know pretty much rookies coming in the season. Absolutely. Now, guys, in our uh, crunch time presented by Pringles Wavy, we, of course, want to, you know, show you another Echo Ultimate <laughs> bit. So uh, take it away. Yeah, I mean... That's, by the way, what you're going to get. Yeah, that's going to be the story <laughs> of the day, just more, or story of the weekend, <laughs> rather, because tomorrow there will be more Echo. So that's how it goes, yeah. Exactly. But it has been exciting to see what... Uh, what heroes the players opt for. We saw Doha pick a bit of May and Moria last time around, but now we saw a lot of Winston in this matchup. And it makes us wonder, like, what is what is the, the, the limit to these Echo Wolves? Like, what will we see in a month and in two months, etc., as we level up, according to custom standards, this Echo play? So it's interesting that we see a lot of Winston. And my hot take is that, yeah, Winston's a good pick to ult and transform into. But it's probably only because he's also one of the easiest heroes to play. Because yeah. you leap and then you just beam people down, right? So it's pretty, whoa, whoa, it's pretty whoa, easy whoa, to play. Whoa, whoa. Yo, I'm the main tank. I can make <laughs> those statements. You know, I'm he the main tank this. here. You're, you're Reinhard. <laughs> true. Yeah, what yeah, are you true, talking true. about? But I, it's I, interesting I to see how that develops. I just want to point out as well that while Winston is a decent pick, I want to see if we actually start seeing some D.Va being transformed because D.Va can have incredible impact with both the defense matrix and you can get a lot of space and pos positioning ability if you actually get a self-destruct up in time. So that's going to be really interesting to me to see how that evolves over time. Yeah, I, I mean, Jaw certainly was very yeah. excited about the double Winston. I think it's really interesting. I would say the main reason people go for Winston is... I think it's very reliable in which you get value for your yeah. like for your transform. Like you, you've seen some people try and turn into Brig, try and turn into Sombra, try and turn into May, and sometimes it's just really hard to get that value or you can't go aggressive. With Monkey, just jump in and everything <laughs> will work out. That's pretty much how it is. And that's, you're seeing them get value from it. So it's probably just because Kids at we home, are don't at take level the four. advice from the support player. We're at level four do of not the support. do what he just said. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> do not do what he just said. No, do it. I so I don't, don't want to put down the pick. I don't want to put it down because you get a lot of value. But I, I, I do hope there is like another level to the Echo gameplay and we actually start seeing some other heroes that could get insane value, some set plays perhaps. But for now, I mean, it's just Winston Mania, right? Uh, the, my favorite thing here really is to try and it's a bit of a guessing game, right? As we're watching them duplicate, there was always a big question, was this an op opportunistic duplicate or was there like some real strap yeah. behind? And that's a it's a 50-50 chance, I guess, in some instances, which is very interesting to just kind of, you know, behold. Yeah. Wait, For now, sorry. we are heading into Zoe? the second sorry. half. I'm, oh, I'm no. super sorry I interrupted you, Zoe. No. Reinforce Johnny wants no. to say just something. one thing. Hicks <laughs> is a really funny guy, and I really want him to come up with a name for when you echo all the Winston and turn into a Winston. There has to be an appropriate name, and I really want uh, that Hex brings his creativity and come up with a name. So sorry for inter interrupting you, Zoe. I deeply apologize, uh, and you, you may now wrap the it's game It's all right. Break. No, uh, I hope uh, Hex uh, heard your call to action. 
and we'll be working on that as he is also casting. He's he's very good at he's multitasking, fine. so uh, let, let him do his magic for now. Uh, we're heading into the second half of the Valiant and the Atlanta Rain. Let's see who is going to get the W. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Pringles Wavy. Big crunch, big flavor. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Zipchair Gaming, the official chair supplier of the Overwatch League. Hey guys, welcome back. Rain lead the series 2 to 0 after that 33% take on first point in Hollywood. And Hex, I heard Johnny actually wants us to uh, come up with a comp name for the double Winstons. I mean, you've yeah. got to leave it to the brainless Maximus uh, to think of those. So I appreciate <laughs> it, Johnny. Some, some people don't have the brain power to come up with names, and well, that's you, why I leave yeah. it to us. So generally, we'll just we'll fall on one. So I'm going to give a lot of options. You would Planet of the Apes. Perfect. Um, we also had Gorillas in the Mist. Perfect. But a, a group of gorillas in the wild is actually called a band. So you could do Battle of the Bands. Also referred to as a troop okay. sometimes. So I'm kind of leaning troop. towards calling it Super Troopers. Super Troopers. Super Troopers. I like that, actually. Yeah. Super Troopers. Yeah, so good. we have options. So I'm saying is we, we have a bunch of options on what to call these things. And actually, that's my favorite reason that Echo is introduced in the game is so that I can make up dumb names for compositions. It's my favorite thing in the world. Could you name it Starship Troopers because Winston's <laughs> uh, from space? I think if you get good. a Graviton and then both Winston's jump into it, we could call it Starship Troopers. Oh, this is getting too complicated. <laughs> My Brainus Maximus needs to recharge. We're about to jump into the third map of this series. It's going to be Hanamora. Of course, we're jumping onto Assault. Hanamora, a bit of an interesting one, I must say. So, it's a 
for the assault maps, at least. It's definitely one of my favorite ones, especially first point. There's going to be Echo, absolutely. But I want to know if the teams, um, uh, I want to know if uh, Valiant even are going to be playing the Arna now, because we talked about it a little bit at the end of last map, and uh, the Moira really just really wasn't working out for them. There was too many, uh, too much damage coming out, and the resources that were available for healing just wasn't enough to keep the front line alive at the end of the day. Yeah. Only did we see it on the very final round them actually switch over to the Ana. So it, it's it's kind of this double-edged sword with a Brigida and a Moira because it's a ton of sustain for a bit, right? Like you can't really out-sustain that comp if you're just going to brawl frontline to frontline. It's not going to happen. But when there's all these battles going all over the place and you're not being as efficient as possible as you want to be with the Moira especially, you run out of that healing and you have to use the orb maybe a while away while you're at full health and that orb is your only sense of self-healing. So you're in a little bit of trouble. Brig obviously needs to swing to get self-healing. So it's great in theory if they're going to come at you and you can stick together, but what happened on Hollywood is that there were fights all over the place. You saw them run out of healing in certain situations, and it cost them lives, and it cost them fights, and then it cost them the map. Exactly that, and uh, hey, would you look at that? We spoke about it in a game true. They are going to run uh, Lastro on the Ana this time. So, yeah, like you were saying, the orb... Uh, well, you can right click to heal too, but then you're obviously just not healing, so it kind of uh, kind of sucks, literally, um, in that way as well. So I want to see what KSP is going to do though. here as well. Yeah, because KSP is coming out. in. Yeah, applies out. KSP is coming in. KSP, uh, known as just a hit scan god. Uh, a god. Plenty of valiant players are. Uh, very good at that KSF, also another good damage healer, but playing the Ana here makes a ton of sense. I think Ana on defense here is great. You can get to this like kind of high ground bridges and you can burn them down as they enter in. They're pretty much the only choke you can get in on this point. So really interesting stuff. Sharp and Edison back as the DPS duo for the Atlanta Reign will be running Echo and Tracer respectively. You love to see it. Hmm. Okay, so uh, did it like FRD was deciding where you want to run Zaya. Yeah, they know they have KSP on the Ash, so Makes sense, you just want to eat all that damage, plus the dynamites as well you can eat. And uh, Ash hasn't got a mini escape tool, only one. There it is, the coach gun. She you gotta get the high ground. High ground. Yeah. Oh dear, well, I think you're dead, unfortunately, Dreamer. Yep, yeah, goodbye. Sharp ends up taking him out as well. Beautiful flank by there, by Sharp also. Managed to get to the bat line. Edison doing a lot of work as well, just basically solo. <laughs> it was like 1v3 for a second there. Shax eventually came in to make it a 1v4 and Edison ends up falling down. Quick spawns though, for the rain. Yeah, this isn't too bad. The rain can kind of like halfway retreat. They don't have to go in right now. They just can't lose anyone else because the, that Tracer's going to get back almost immediately. Trip has to be a little bit careful, but he's got his tanks up there with him. Now, sticky bombing corners for the zones. I love that. It's such... I mean, zoning pulse bomb is a meme, but like zoning sticky bombs, legitimate tactic. Yeah, it's a cooldown on ult, so it's even better. Dreamer ends up going down. Now Shaq's on the point fight in the 1v3. Has been falling as well. It's, oh, the stick. Oh, that oh. looked so clean. He blinked past the bash as well. I sleep, but it ain't gonna matter. There's the rest of the cleanup. Shax has got armor, but the Valiant will end up foregoing at this first point. Yeah, unfortunately, Shax, you can't really do uh, the 1v5. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Blinked into yeah. a wall that uh, ends up falling off. Blinking like, past your sticky bank. bomb target is actually referred to as the Hex Special. I, I don't think I've ever hit a sticky bomb in my life. <laughs> I'm always close, though. I'm always so close. Hey man, you'll get there one day one and it'll day. be a momentous occasion. And we'll feature it on <laughs> youtube.com slash Overwatch League as a, a grandioso highlight. When it happens, I'm going to do a whole episode of In My Sights on it. I swear I will. You should do. 18 <laughs> minutes of your sticky bomb uh, accuracy being summed up. All right, here we go. Sharp's jumping in with Pogpo on the corner. Winston. Oh dear, Rain ends up going down. Bob's going to forego the point just a little bit though. That's not going to be too bad at all. But look at that, chasing straight into the spawn. Sharp pop of the Primal Rage. He only has four seconds of his ult left. He transforms back. And what a steamroll onto this point. Dreamer ends up getting taken down as well. This double Winston, the pressure was a little bit too much, it felt like. Self-destruct on the point to uh, forego a little bit of percent. But there's Rain still piling on the pressure in the back. Pogpo does get naded, but he was nano, so he's going to keep himself alive with that damage resistance. Sharp getting taken out is a good start for the Valiant's defense as they do clean up the rest. The rain, unfortunately, were a couple of pixels, in fact, away from actually getting one tick. So a little bit of an unfortunate offense there. Edison gets sent off into the stratosphere, straight to Horizon Lunar Colony with that dynamite, as they do end up holding on to this second point. Yeah, Atlanta not able to make that one perfect. 
I, I mentioned the word ace a lot when we're on assault maps because it feels like you have to be absolutely perfect. Spawns right behind the defenders. And if the longer the fight takes for the offense, the worse it is because even when you're getting picks, you still end up fighting 6v6, but the other team are coming out fresh out of spawn. Gets a little bit difficult. Atlanta, not a ton to work with here. Edison and FRD nearing ultimates. We go again. Well, KSP takes out Popo. It's a nice little trade, though, onto Shaq. It's not the worst thing in the world, but the defense, especially on Hanamura, is uh, just... You, you're going to win this if you get a pick. There's absolutely no way. Dreamer has Primal Rage as well. There's KSP. We talked about how he's such an aim wizard. Like, he is just ridiculous. It's like, all he wants to do is aim. In fact, I was talking to Pac and 10 I'll give you this little story word in the interlude hex. Pac and 10 and I know KSP a little bit. We've talked a couple of times. We met uh, at BlizzCon. I've been BlizzCon and uh, one of the lands for EU contenders way back when in 2018. And all he wants to do is sit there and aim, right? That's what he wants to do. He just practices aim every single day. And you can see why the Valiant wants to pick him up. Because his Ash, his Widow, his Kree, you put him on any character that requires just an inch of aim. This guy is just an absolute wizard if you put the resources into him, which the Valiant are doing. You can teach a lot of things in Overwatch. You can teach positioning, you can teach teamwork. You cannot teach aim. It's similar to sports where you just can't teach speed. You can teach him everything else. Oh, what a st- Oh, no! <laughs> oh, oh, the worst situation for Shex to be in! That looks so sick, that 180 pulse bomb! I mean, we'll give it- uh, Yeah, there you go, man. On um, Edison, lucky. Well, that's what I'd definitely be saying if I was Edison right there. Oh, that was beautiful. Valiant's still holding on to this point, though. Nano ons to the Winston as he jumps to the back line. Dogman in trouble, but still receiving an armor pack and a whole bunch of support. Dreamer going fairly low, but still. Rain trying to crack this 33% mark. There's two minutes remaining, and KSP being alive as well is a good sign. Sharp transforming into the Winston, has that primal rage in the back. Dogman in trouble yet again, but the support once again landing at his side. An armor pack on him will save his life. Pokepo, meanwhile, deals with Valiant's backline. self destruct doesn't find too much apart from a little bit of space generated. Rally on to the point now for the Valiant as McGravy gets demexed, not quite in time to actually receive the armor and a perfectly timed Biograin as well to stop Rain doing all too much. He gets cleaned up, 98% for the Rain. They just need Valiant to step off the point for a brief moment and they'll take the point. One minute to go and this should just be it. Shaq's on his last legs. He ends up getting chased down to Sport by Edison. The boot from the Primal Rage will seal the deal and the Rain end up with a minute and 50 15 seconds, that crucial 15 seconds too, in their time bank for the preceding rounds. An actual zoning pulse bomb from Edison there towards the end. There was only two people alive on the right hand side. Maybe you want to stick that pulse bomb right on the lip of that ledge, but he drops it right below it. And it's just because they're so close to jumping on the point, he's buying time by putting the pulse bomb on the ground there. Yeah, don't forget, to, don't forget, guys, we are playing a part together. Activision, Blizzard, and Overwatch League are proud to support the World Health Organization to encourage all players around the world to play a part together. We use player to, uh, we, uh, when we play a part together, we're using one of the most powerful pre uh, preventative strategies to protect ourselves, our loved ones, and everybody else around us. We all have the power to combat this pandemic by staying at home and just chilling and playing games together. We've been preparing for this our entire lives, so you, oh, you can finally been. use your your gaming gremlinness to your uh, to the benefit of all, really. Gamers are here to stay. <laughs> we have taught the world how to game, not to love again, but how to game. We are here. Even my dad and my mum actually saying that back in the UK of uh, been playing a little bit more games. They don't play much. I mean, my my dad used to play PS2 with us back in the. Back in the good old days, just a little bit here and there, but they've been pretty bored too, stuck at home. And I'm sure your parents have been stuck and bored as well. Why not show them your favorite games? Whether that's Overwatch or whatever you want. You know, Tetris. Yeah. Doesn't matter what friends, it is. Just get some, get some Scrabble online. There's what me and my sister yeah. play against each other. You know, like there's... Whip. You, know, I, you don't have to play the, the games you play, but there's you, know, you can play board games online. There's a lot of different ways to participate in this event. Yeah. And I think everyone... Play a part together. Yeah. I get rocked in Scrabble, by the way, and my sisters always hold it over me because, like, I have a couple English degrees, but Scrabble just doesn't make sense. I I refuse to play Scrabble with uh with any of the Australians because they just make up words. <laughs> well, that's um, the entire the, language is based on yeah, making up words. Made up words. It just happens. I hear Mitch screaming at us in our raids in, in World of Warcraft, and he just says nonsense. I don't know what he's saying. 
He's not even a tank, he's DPS. Oh, Addison all the way in the back just evacuates KSP. Because I, I was going to mention earlier, I think it's a great map for Ash on both offense and defense. The sight lines, the ledges, the angles, it's just a perfect map for her. But he knows that she wants to sit back there, gets back in, and takes her out. That hurts. Addison. Yikes. Yep. Very, very quick caps coming here as well. FRD, I love him back on the Zaya, but can't really do all too much here. He can obviously damage down the gravy, but this point is getting capped so quickly. Shaq's on the tracer is obviously a lovely, 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 lovely thing to see. And with KSP as well, there's so much pressure on the front line. It's almost like the ignore Farah kind of thing. You kind of ignore KSP to try and deal with the front line, but as soon as you ignore him, he kind of takes over the game. Five and a half minutes, exactly the same story that Rain would put themselves in uh, earlier on. And this, I like, FRD onto the Zarya, it's been working out for them a lot of the game, but maybe a D.Va here would be good, because if you get KSP set up on this high ground while the rest of the team's pushing the point, you're in trouble. You need somebody to be able to knock off. Dreamer with the Nano. Didn't really find all too much there. It was a bit too scared to jump in, especially with the uh, Popo in his back line as well. Playing a little bit more safe this time around. Set KSP up on the high ground. That is the key to success for the Valiant. See how good. He clicks it! Yeah. He's waiting for that bubble to go away. That's why he didn't click there, guys. Oh, nice. it's, it's the checkmate spot. It's where you used to try to put Soldier to win maps on this, too, or win this map in particular. If you can get somebody up there, it, it forces resources, the tanks to go up, and that means the rest of your team is playing against a single tank on the point. Two, ta uh, two tanks now for the Valiant. They have Bob on point as well. Grabs on Turtle on the sidelines. Rain ends up going down. They're still able to contest for a little bit. Self destruct high in the skies as well. The rally is coming out for the rain, but Master has no shield. A little bit more vulnerable now than he once was, but the rain is still going to battle against the Valiants. They do end up taking them out. Yeah, Four and Edison, a bit minutes. Edison all over the place denies the remake. I kind of. Uh, th this idea is free, Atlanta. You can have it. You need an in house tracer tournament. I think they have Ooh, like four, cool. four really good tracers on this squad. Uh, I want to see it. See, this is just free content for me all day. It's free shots taken by Cusper as well. He's just doing such a, such a good job of just pushing everybody back. Here you go. Here, here's KSP's uh, time to shine. Ooh, nice bio grenade. Once again, three people here. Yeah, KSP tanked that in the face. Same with Lasher and Dreamer. He is so low. Edison just blinks, tripling to the back line. Ends up finishing him off. And the cleave damage will do the rest. Someone is capping, by the way. Um, they should be able to get them off, though, uh, rather quickly. I think it was Shax at the end of it. But Bo goes fairly low, but that'll be a big cleanup. It's 33%. It's rather dangerous for uh, Atlanta Rain, though. They do have to be on the point and be uh, very aware of where Shax is as well. It is a strategy that you can employ if you feel like you've halfway won a fight. It's like, let's just make sure we get 33% this time, we'll get up to 66 next time, and you piecemeal it together. That way you don't have to win this fight perfectly, as long as you can win long enough to get uh, the team off the point for 33%, which obviously is much, much easier than 100%. They're going to have a bob again. Shaq's looking for the pulse bomb. Edison and Pokemon on the other side have their alts as well. Big leap hit. You know, Pokpo has that uh, primal rage. He's uh, positioning himself like that. So, uh, Pulse Bomb going a little bit wide. Zoning Pulse Bomb once again. Bob gets slept on the sidelines as well. Master ends up going down now. It's only Dogman to heal the rain. And Sharp ends up falling too. Another hard job for the supports. And Dreamer taking out Dogman. This is extremely good. If you're a Valiant fan right now, you want them to come back in this series. Rain is still 2 0 up. Mind you, KSP on the high ground, nothing's going to stop him now. He's having such a good time, and so are the rest of Valiant. There you go, two minutes and 26 seconds. A minute over Reign's time, not bad at all for Hanamura as we go once again. That's what Ash dreams are made of, and before that it was what 76 dreams are made of. Even McCree, pick your distance de damage dealer of choice on Hanamura when you have the rest of the five on your team on the point and no one's looking at you and they're staggering out of spawns and you're just playing a solo player point and click adventure knocking heads it feels like oh this is the best hero in the game why don't i always do this well yeah because people will jump on you otherwise but when they don't have that ability and it like i've always said about this map it gets very difficult even if the other team's running um let's say a winston and a diva that's resources that aren't fighting the point then. And if you can escape that, you're putting your team in a great position. I've always loved this ledge on Hanamura that we're about to go out through now. 476 and now for Ash as well. Because just dropping dynamites on the point is great too. Yeah, you, because the point is, it's not the biggest point in the world. It's also not the smallest point. I think it's like a medium-sized uh, 
if you look at the geometry. But it does so much splash damage. Like you said, put the dynamite in straight in the middle, you're going to get so much tick damage. And that tick damage does add up over the time. Not only is it contributing to your ult charge on the Ash, but for the healers, it puts a little bit of a strain on. If there's not that instant kind of burst healing, it can be something that can really stop a trace from getting much work done. Yeah, and Bob is not terrible on that point either because he's not really going to run off cliffs or go in a terrible spot. He's usually going to end up contained in that box. And if there's a tracer or something trying to come out to contest or blink away, he's going to get auto shot down by Bob. Kind of disgusting if you ask me. Uh, the amount of times I put Bob in the pit, though. My goodness. I always forget there's like <laughs> that's, a small That's gap. always Bob's fault. It's not yours, right? Yep. He didn't jump. Why you know you <laughs> space key, Bob? Oh, KSP with a very, very early kill onto Sharp. That was very nice. Good start. For the Valiant, yes indeed. Look at him, he's just sat there. Oh, well, there yeah, you go. This nice is my favorite spot. My favorite spot is Ash on first right there. Look at the pocket as well. He not only received that bio grenade, he also got armor pack too, so he was not going down anytime soon. And the Rain Hex, they have one more fight left. And they're not going to have anything. Uh, no one's even at 50%. Dogman just gets there right now. But this is going to be an altless fight, but an altless fight, altless fight on both sides. Effort, he has to go back. He's going to switch to the Diva just to get back into the suit. Baby Diva not very useful in this fight. And I think a first pick here could decide this point. Very much so. you got to watch out. Oh, my goodness. The duel. Oh, the double melee. Oh, dear. With Edison going down and a big stick by Shax as well. That's so much damage from the Valiant. KSP still left alone. This should be it. The Rain are going to get held here on Hanamura first. No ticks to their name either. And now the Valiant only need one tick, 33% to take the map. And they we might are, see themselves through as well. This we could are, be the reverse sweep they uh, everybody was hoping for. We are 100% going to map four. There is no way for the Atlanta Rain to win this map. They can draw it. That is the best case scenario. But the Valiant first offense on this map on first point was rather swift. So if they can repeat that performance, they should be in a good spot. Also, I'd imagine that KSP will be playing uh, a little more safe watching his back because one of the reasons it even took them as long as it did the first time is because Edison got to the back line where the Ash wants to set up on that first point offense and got taken out. Now, if he just has the coach gun on cooldown, should be in a better spot to deal with it. But the Valiant looking to bring this one back on the salty run back. This, this could get interesting. KSP's Ash has been great. I think keep KSP in, in this situation and just, uh, just have him be permanently looking for the Echo. Maybe that's the, the way they play this. Although we did mention before, and Apply was really, really good on the Echo. And you can see how much he's been practicing that hero. But I don't know. Maybe the, the counter is the way to go rather than the mirror if you're uh, the Valiant right now. Yeah, it just seems like that's what they want to play on this map. Uh, KSP has played uh, pretty much 100% Ash here. And I think the changes to Ash, you know, we saw it a little bit last week as well with a lot more Ash play than we'd seen, uh, well, since her release, to be honest. And I think the changes have made people with natural aim much more comfortable with her. Here we go. The final countdown for the Valiant. They're setting up, so they've got about two minutes to go. Two fights, maybe a little bit of a scrappy third as well. Shax knows exactly who he wants to kill. It's going to be Edison. Forced recall instantly into a sleep there. Did accidentally end up waking up though through the uh, Tesla cannon, unfortunately. So Shax now making his way to the point. Press permanently pressuring, and Sharp's already dead. He didn't receive any healing. Talking about Amasa trying to put his pay attention to the front line. His FRD was pretty low as well. Now one person needs to just be able to touch the point to contest. Shax ends up recalling, same with Edison. Sharp switching over to the Sombra to get back in time. This could be all over as Shax just taking over this game completely. There's Edison falling as well. This is it. This is Rain now crumbling on the first point of Hanamura. And the run back could be here for the Valiants. They end up capping and there it is. The great. one win they needed to keep themselves in the series. Absolutely great rotations by Shax. And first of all, like the back cap when you only need a third is so much more important when you need 100%. Because team will ignore you and ignoring it doesn't matter. Maybe they'll let you get a tick and they don't care. But that is a ton of pressure just being on the point. Somebody has to go. Then people come in and he rotates around to where the next target is. He sees his tanks have a Brigida up there. He's like, okay, I'll go help out. Rotates around, provides the damage that they need to clean up that Brigida, to clean up that Ana and the 
Zarya in the end. I think the Zarya lived, but the point got capped. Otherwise, that was a foregone conclusion. KSP hitting 50% of his scoped hits, uh, critical hits, 50% KSP. I think the changes have made that a lot easier. Anna, or excuse me, Ash used to feel like I will hit this first headshot and then I will never hit anything again. It just felt weird kind of coming back into the scope. It just felt strange and... KSP's Ash looked really good there. The Valiant are turning this into a match. Atlanta Rain looking a little shaky on Hanamura, but still up two to one in the series. Valiant looking clean. They're looking good. And like you said, KSP and his crit rate, kind of nutty. One thing you got to think about, especially looking at the previous two maps, was they did run mirror. Maybe the counter over the mirror in this kind of situation is what they really needed to propel them forwards. It's looking good for them so far. FRD Zaya, I felt like it didn't really get much done at all, especially on that last fight. I can definitely see why they were running it because they had so much success with it in the last two maps. But dealing with KSP's Widow, um, sorry, not, not Widow, sorry, the Ash, is something that the Zaya can't do at all. You don't have thrusters yeah. like Diva, you don't have defense matrix at all, and FRD's uh, um, Diva is definitely solid, well, but know. it's not much you can do against uh, KSP when he's just free to live his life as he is. Ash is just a Western Widow. It's it's a mistake everyone makes. A <laughs> Western Widow. <laughs> well, we're going to jump to a quick <laughs> break while we mull that one over, as map number four is coming on your screens right after this. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, helping you stay connected to what matters most. Learn about T-Mobile's COVID-19 response on T-Mobile.com. What? And I, I am now not muted. My bad. I, uh, <laughs> we were both you muted know, the thing the is, um, as every man has to do, I had to go hit the powder room and I had to powder myself back up. And uh, what you missed was my brilliance of saying that Apply is not in the lineup this time. KSP looks like he's staying in there. Uh, Apply has been playing. I'm going to go through it really quick. Apply was the one playing the Echo. KSP has not been playing the Echo. And now that we go on a Dorado, I think that KSP is not going to be playing Echo. I think KSP is going to stick on some hit scan. That's what I said. I'm very sorry. I forgot to hit the button. That's my fault. Don't blame production. 
Yeah, it was my fault too. I just oh, said something so intelligent. Too. Yeah, I was muted too. <laughs> I said something so intelligent that I can't TLDR it. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I was muted as well. <laughs> my bad. Our bad. We're into the game though. We should be getting into it rather shortly. It is going to be Dorado as uh, still potential final map for the rain as they are still on match point, but the Valiant looking strong with KSP. And it's something that we definitely talked about um, coming into the series, or at least we did at least. And uh, I think a lot of uh, people have been wondering where applies and is he going to make his debut eventually and he has been on the echo but going into dorado while it has been historically i wouldn't say incredibly far a favor but farah is definitely a hero you can play on this map yeah. echo you can do as well but his scan just does so so well even if you don't have widow with the long sight lines you can still do so much work with ash the choke points are so small the dynamite gets a lot of value and being able to sit so far back without normally um, caring about the risk of dive because you've been running Brig, yeah. KSP seems like the obvious person here to just put and stick to the roster, um, stick in with the roster. I'm actually really interested to see what we will see on this because now that you mentioned, yeah, it's it's a really good Farah map. We saw a lot of Farah on this map last week, but without the Mercy in it, you just really can't run Farah. You just feel like you can't do it because you're not going to get enough value out of it. The damage from the rockets aren't there. So for the Valiant who are on defense right now. They're queuing up to what I think will be their composition. KSP, I mean, the Ash on offense is a little bit strange sometimes, but you can get Dynamite over the top to where the team is usually camping out on right side. Sharp will be picking up the Echo and Edison on the Tracer for this Atlanta Rain team in a kind of divey composition, but these are like weird dive compositions because it's a dive with a, a Brig and an Ana, and we'll see what they want to run. I would love to see some Roadhog here, um, but that's uh, because I'm a big fan of the Hog. See what the Valiant actually nice. come out on. I mean, he's it probably an early halt and hook. Yeah, get it. Oh, they got it too. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so unlucky. Oh, Popo. If only FRD was there to matrix that. Well, that's one pick for uh, <laughs> for the Valiant, and now they can just push on pretty much for free under this archer. You can see how far the Rain are pulling back. And now he's in the. That's perfect. It allows him to get into the spot. You can't really play Ash if you're like getting spawn camp that we've seen a lot of teams get camped on in Dorado. But if you can take this bridge away, it's a perfect spot to be in Ash. Jeez, look at the damage uh, Shax is doing in the back. Something you really want to trifle with. And, uh, yeah, now it's him versus Edison. Edison has armor packs at his back, though, so he should be more than okay to take the duel. KSP and McGrady playing front line as uh, Sharp ends up diving on in and gets taken out. A little bit of out of LOSP as I uh, believe so. Even FRD, what is FRD doing back there? Well, he just appeared from nowhere and ends up getting demecked and uh, de-lifed as well. Poke Dying Poke ends up going team. down to the nade. Dogman has just been on fire with these uh, bio grenades as well. But unfortunate that it did end up going down there also. But Valiant looking good in this first point push. Yeah, ain't gonna save him though. Sharp makes a switch to Sombra. It is the first Sombra that we have seen today. KSP, again, in just the perfect spot. Ooh. Hitting headshots after headshots. His crit rate is so high. Edison almost went down though. He was lucky that was uh, just out of range of one shot. He's good for the time being. But that's a very, very fast point one take for, uh, for the mean, Valley. My, my point stands though, you're seeing the Ash played in a lot of spots that traditionally a Widow would be played, but Widow unavailable this week out of the hero pool. Like, that is the Widow spot right there. Hey, McGravy, you can see how much they want to pocket KSP. He's right on Belong's item, making sure no damage can come about. Shaq trying to be a little bit cheeky. Wait for that dive in, then he can rush around. There you go. See, watch for the tanks to drop. That's a beautiful pulse. 180 straight on Master's back. Dogman now trying to heal out the rest of the team, jumping in to the Valiants as the rally was going off too. There was no way he was going to get kills. He was just trying to get ultra ult charge and uh, try to make sure his team could stall out for as long as possible. Now really good timing. Get, maybe just one more chance here to actually stop this point. That's an unlucky recall. Sharp ends up going down. Great patience there from the Los Angeles Valiant and Shaxx in particular to wait on that edge, to wait for the tanks for the Atlanta rain to drop down, making sure that there's no matrix that's going to stop his bomb. He knows the people that are going to stay up top are probably going to be the healers. Maybe not the Brigida, but definitely the Ana ends up finding the Brigida. Masa has been a magnet for pulse bombs all day. 
Now he can continue to push. Uh oh, yeah, he traps in a very small room with the primal raging Nano Winston. Dogman at last, right up trading. So um, healers down for the Valiant with only Brig available for the rain. They're trying their hardest to actually kill him off. They do actually manage to do it. That self destruct finishes off FRD as well as Valiant do swarm the payload. There's no way Rain are going to be able to stop this one from capping, it feels like. They have got that EMP, but Sharp and Edison are way too low for them to do anything. And they continue the steamroll. Four minutes and 40 seconds heading on to the factory. Uh, they need this EMP to get value just as a, a pressure release gauge here because they're, they're just getting pushed. And they can't do anything about it. Shax is a monster. That's his second kill on Sharp in about the last 90 seconds. I'm surprised Sharp even has the EMP at this point, but he's done a good job at least farming it up. Oh, look at this spawn cap too. Ooh, that pulse bomb would have been good if that hit. That would have been a, a one for the highlights, dodging through everybody to try and kill a support. It's a lot of work they could do though. KSP kill though, that's a good start. Pulse bomb has been eaten by McGravy. Wondrous, uh, he is actually eating <laughs> ultimates up. Shax is going to get bullied out. Yeah, you can see now. They know he's on the sidelines. They don't want to kill him off. And uh, Valiant playing this one a little bit more slow now. And they're going to, well, maybe not just a uh, full retreat, actually. Yeah, they've got to be get more out. in order. Yeah, I was thinking maybe if Rain survives, they play it slow, but uh, him going down is pretty disastrous. And this is good for Rain because they're able to win that fight and stop the bleeding, put the tourniquet on their defense here without using EMP. And the Valiant came in full bore, used almost everything that they had available at the time, and were unable to get the progress forward. Last point though, and three and a half minutes remain for the Valiant offense to continue to push forward. But this is a very defensive favorite point. The EMP comes out. Ooh, yeah, he hit him, uh, McGravy, but KSP ends up falling as Popo with the nano boost, jumps to the back line, Lastro. He's dead, surely, surely, surely? Yes, he goes down eventually. That melee will finish him off, and Pokepo saving himself. We're using that Primal Rage, and he's trying to find a little bit more value here. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was so close, he could have gone off. But, uh oh no, he missed, nope. he missed! missed oh, oh no, he was so close to getting back. That would have looked so sick if he landed that, but unluckily he goes down. That does mean Rain has to play a little bit further back here, but Valiant still need to regroup, so it's not the worst loss in the world. Platforming is difficult, man. Difficult yeah, game type. It's true, dude. True. Not been playing Mario, I see. Should probably uh, get on that. <laughs> right, now, where do they stand here? Really? Dream has been X. X. What is the key to success in this situation? I mean, Sharp building towards an EMP, but that is uh, a long way away, it feels uh -huh. like. That will definitely help. That Pulse Bomb doing a whole lot of work. Double support almost going down as Lastro forced to use the healing orb on himself. Now FRD's uh, jumping into the mix as Shaq ends up falling too. There you go. Another attack halted by the rain. But the nice thing for the Valiant is that they've been banking alts. Yeah, you see most of their alts are about to come online. They have double support alt, double tank alt, and the Pulse Bomb from Shaq could open this up for this team. Meanwhile, all that said, Sharp is going to have an EMP, which means they might not be able to hit Q at all, as long as he doesn't get found out by Shax. I mean, Shax is the only one killing Sharp this game. And I think Sharp should just play it patient. Look, you're on defense, the Valiant are going to have to come in. You don't want to commit early and not allow your team to pick up kills off of you. I love the way Brain are actually positioned now, trying to make Valiant actually fight in a small choke. There's the EMP. It's absolutely massive, but the kills have already come through. That EMP was a fraction too late. The damage from the Valiant just pushed them on forward, almost into the perfect storm for the rain, but it's not going to happen. That EMP now falling, that was their one major tool to kind of defend. Sharp switches over to the Reaper. One minute and 20 seconds now remains. I've always said the great thing about EMP is it forces your team to play with a smart economy. The Valiant are going to have a self-destruct coalescence and still this pulse bomb because they got EMP. Oh, look at him, he's hunting them down. Oh, that Coalescence is so good. They try to test Studo formation around Dogman, but Dogman just gets blown up pieces by that Coalescence. Self-destruct on the point, doesn't quite find anything as the heals are way too much now. It feels for the rain to bear. A nice little cherry on top with the Death Blossom. Master and Edison end up falling. It's only the Primal Rage and Winston, but he gets chunked out, killed off. And 46 seconds is what the rain now have to beat. Well, they finished Dorado. Not the easiest map to finish, and it is one of those maps where you can snowball first into second rather easily, but second into third is difficult because as, as these maps go on, um, as the escort maps go on, they get smaller and they get more defender favored here, and it was nice for Atlanta to be able to hold off the bleeding because the Valiant were on a record-setting pace uh, to finish that map. 
So some nice players. I thought Sharp's EMPs were a good idea in practice. They didn't necessarily work. You have to wonder the comfort level on that hero on that composition because it seemed like that's not what he wanted to play, but it was, guys, we have just gotten rolled over and uh, the last several fights, I need to switch to something. And Sombra is that single ultimate can stop uh, the, the, the bleeding for your team. Able to pull that one back. But Atlanta Rain has to finish this map. Otherwise, we're going to a map five. Oh, that's definitely what uh, the Valiant fans want. It's that map number five. And potentially a reverse sweep as well. KSP back on the Ash. I think it's I like it's it. mu it's I much like better it. on the defense for the Ash, much better. Hundred percent, hundred percent. It's like it's like when you're playing with a make on offense. It's it's very difficult unless your team kind of open up the high ground, um, and then you can kind of play a little bit more aggro. Otherwise, you're just in the worst sight lines possible. Nice little dynamite to start off with, though. Um, by KSP gets a little bit of ultra, not too much though. Oh, they know Shanks is there shortly. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> he got slept. There's no way they can kill him, I don't think. No, yeah, Defense Matrix even coming out from uh, McGravy there to stop that damage. Shaq's getting the recall as well, and an armor pack to see him off. Well, a much more forward hold here for the Los Angeles Valiant as they're trying to get the tanks hip-hopping up and down, leapfrogging back and forth over each other. Effort is going to be denied, but he's safe. No kills thus far. Sharp's still trying to find an entrance, it feels like. He's got 40% ult charge, though. Not too bad for this point in the game. There you go. They force him off the high ground. Now, uh, FRD and Popo jumping into the back line. Rain teases to death, and unfortunately, Lastro couldn't keep him up. Lastro still has Nano, though. This could be an opportunity for them to go in really hard for this one. KSP, in fact, gets nano I mean, why not? The guy can <laughs> click heads. He's going to click a whole lot more with the Nano. My goodness, Edison didn't stand a chance. A one-shot body shot for the Ash, and he's earned himself a bob as well. Shaq's a somber hunt right now. Like, you know, is it is it duck season? Is it rabbit season? No, it is somber season. And Shax has been going after it. He has gotten sharp several times. I'd like to go back and see some of his POV. I wonder if he's just spraying and praying around these corners. Uh, what would be referring to a spy checking to make sure that she's visible. But every time Sharp comes out of cloak, Edison's or yeah, Shax is just like, well, I've got better guns and I got two of them. Takes them out. Let's get to try me. Master ends up going down to a pulse bomb. Not the best starter in the world if you're rain. You still have that EMP as well. Primal Rage used by Pokepo to keep himself alive. Healer now down for the Valiant. That's not a good start at all. Dogman as well taking the fight into his own hands, taking out Shax. Pokepo in the back line just bullying rain. And this is the point as well, by the way. If you just push the healer around with a Primal Rage, it's almost impossible for them to heal. It can be uh, as good as just killing them, to be fair. And with rain now completely out of the engagement, Rain can just uh, surge on forward, plus they now can bait They're Valiant in with the EMP. And here you go, you can kind of see Sharp just kind of standing in this corner. KSP has come back onto the Reaper, has already used his Wraith Warp. A nice little hack onto him as well, will stop a whole bunch of that damage and safety the Reaper can use. Holding that Shift Key, the Pulse Bomb will come out, but it's, it looks like a slow bleed now. now the Rain, however, Yeah, the Rain, however, actually have uh, taken down two. McGravy comes back with Vengeance, Vengeance to take out Pokepo. He isn't going to get hacked either. EMP eventually comes out as Rain also ends up falling. This is an absolute mess once again. Thriving in the chaos though. Oh, the Valiant. That Pulse Bomb hitting the mech. D suiting FRD. And Shax finishing up the fight as well. The Atlanta Rain halted 0.6 of a meter away from the first point. At one point in time, it was only Rain, Lastro, and Shaxx on the point. Lastro is exactly where you see him right now. Rain had rallied on the point and was swinging away. You're not going to kill a rallying Brigida. And as long as, as I mentioned, as long as Shaxx was able to stay alive and provide damage for that team, they were going to be okay. McGravy came back in and he got a couple, and they really bring that one back from the brink. This is not starting great, though. In fact, I would say this is starting as bad as possible. Yeah, that is gonna be it. I believe Master actually got Nano there. If you want to try and kill someone in this game, that's Nano. You don't want to be trying to kill a brick. Like, yeah, it's actually impossible. I, I, I think it's it, the Immortal button is basically what it is. Plus, you get Ult Charge even quicker as well. Edison gets, uh, yeah, there's a Dynamite to the face, and then he ends up backing off. But Range struggling, in fact, getting that first point. Sharp's building up and towards another EMP. Normally quite a good EMP point, though, Hex, because you can just get everybody as soon as they jump down to the low ground. Yeah, uh, Shax is not spraying behind. Oh, wow. In fact, I think he thinks the Sombra is over there. 
But I, I already like this defense better for the Valiants because they're able to g actually get a position to fight on second point a little bit better. And huge bomb! Oh, Shax with a huge pulse bomb. Later. Getting both supports. Yeah. That's what you want to see from your Tracer player. I mean, you probably stuck one and then they ran into each other, but you take credit for both. Beautiful Here's play. That just ends it. That just ends the fight entirely. Don't move. When you are pulse bombed, do not stop moving. Release your... W, A, S, and D keys, or your um, thumbstick, whatever the console Very or famously, play. on this point on this map, there was a fellow named Felix who got pulse bombed and jumped up to the high ground and took his team out. That was, I think, Good like times. three years ago, but <laughs> it's an iconic Overwatch moment. This might be another one here. That tracking through the air from Sharp looking pretty clean. EMP is still available. Almost gets interrupted, but Rain actually just takes him out with play other than an uh, uh, easy whip shot to the dome. SP down too, that's a lot of damage now missing from the Valiant. And that, that armor coming onto Shrax just every single time is just crazy. He's not going down just yet. Both uh, honors have fallen, however, but Dreamer, yeah, he's in the back line. Using that Primal Rage, taking out two. And that'll be Valiant once again, holding onto this payload. Rain really <laughs> struggling to make an impact. Pokemon was already leaving, but Dreamer wanted to make sure that it was, it was his choice that he was leaving. Yeah, it wasn't, uh, wasn't Pokepo's idea that he was leaving. It was Dreamer who was going to make him. <laughs> bounced him out of there. Only one minute remaining. However, Atlanta has extremely powerful ultimates. They have Graviton Surge, they have Nano Boost, and they have EMP. Ideally, see, that's what you're talking about. You stop moving, and then FRD also just bubbles himself. Ideally, you oh. only want to use Grav or EMP, not both. That's a big EMP. Hit Dreamer and McGravy. Nice little hack, though. You see... As soon as he uses that EMP, he, you know he knows he's not like super useful doing damage, really. So he actually hangs with his supports to make sure they don't instantly die to Shax, who can basically one clip them. So he sits there, waits, holds out the uh, holds out the hand. The hack instantly comes onto Shax as soon as he reveals himself, and then he ends up going down. Six uh, thirty seconds to remain for the rain as they do end up pushing themselves onto this point. Graviton surge somehow not eaten by McGrady there. It looked like it did, but it ends Dreamer's life and Lash Rose as well. It's the rain still fighting for their lives here on this point. Valiant are making it hard for them, but the grab really did seal the deal. So you only get a little bit of extension. 90 seconds are added to the clock here, and it's 1.30 left for Atlanta to try to finish this map. The Valiant finished the map with 47, or 46 seconds left, excuse me. So it's two pushes for the Atlanta rain to complete Dorado, and we'll do a second half, or we're gonna go to control map five for all the marbles. Hard point to cap, though. We talked about it last time. Oh, good sleep. Edison's Pulse Bomb as well is available. He does manage to get the recall off just in time. He's got his eyes on the sports in the back. The Pulse Bomb flung around the corner and still gets lashed through. Are you serious? The splash damage must have got him. I think Astro is pretty low as well. That is such a good kill from Edison. Rain is using the rally, and he's got a lot of armor on the front line, but you're lacking so much healing now. They're going to be able to get here. Lastro is going to be able to join the fight once again. But you've got to be careful now. of rain. EMP, yeah. Nano it is going to be the ceiling deal for the rain if they can uh, actually stay alive. Shax wants this one. He's got it. He's got it. Oh, the flip. The post swap. He landed on something. I think he connected with the floor. Happy birthday to the ground. This uh, Dreamer pummels everybody else in the small corridor. Edison and Jogman end up going down. Lastro pick up a kill of his own. That will be the rain now with one fight remaining. 20 seconds on the board for the someone to touch as well. Massa, FRD, it's all over for them. They, they didn't want to stall out for any longer. 15 seconds. Someone can touch. Someone, someone can, can touch get and there they have in time. But it's going to be so quick. EMP and Grav are their win conditions here. I think Lastro could nano. I mean, maybe just nano rain here and drop on a point and just hope for it. Like a preemptive nano. They have to know EMP's ready. They have to know it. Job's really low as well. He can't put himself in too much of a dangerous situation. OG's here for the rain. They need to at least find one pick. This EMP and grab's got to be big. EMP comes out. He's nobody. The no man EMP. Oh, you hate to see it. And Dog Van ends up going down as well. The grab's going to be there. The KSP just lines it all up. The Nano on the brig. He's not going down anytime soon. Edison at least finds a pulse. There's still fight in the rain as McGravy also ends up going down. They got no healers though as Massa and Dogman end up coming back on fast ones. There's the Pfizer, best ult in the game, mowing them all down. Massa <laughs> comes back, instantly destroyed, and that is it. The Valiant are still in this series. The reverse sweep is possible. Oh, I love it. This has been one hell of a series to watch. It has not been the cleanest series ever, but I think a part of that is because of how the... 
how the hero pools work and the limited time teams have to adjust. Put that on top of a new hero being introduced. And yes, scrims can tell you a lot, but they can't tell you everything that you need to know about these teams. And it's, it's just been fun to watch. Sharp left something to be desired on that Sombra. But I think it was a reactionary pick. I don't think that was necessarily their plan going forward on it. I think you would have liked to do the Tracer Duels a lot, and Tracer Duels have been fun. And I think towards the end, I call them, like, just Nano the Brig. Like, at least someone will be alive. They can't touch the cart. You're just swinging around, glowing, and, and macing to the face. Very fun series so far. The Los Angeles Valiant DPS line has been really fun to watch, and you gotta give up uh, a lot to their supports. We've been calling out their tanks, their tanks have been making plays, but we haven't said their supports names, and I'm always, uh, always saying that that's a good thing. It means that you're not making mistakes. You don't have to be a giant playmaker as support, you just gotta be alive. Lastro and Rain have played pretty well in the last couple of maps. Yeah, I thought they have. Lastro switching over to the Arno has been uh, almost a saving grace. And, you know, maybe the kryptonite to fall rain has been KSP as well. You sub him in and look what happens. They now take two maps back to back and we're going to Busan as our decider as well. This has been such a close series. And what I thought was going to be a little bit more one-sided. I, I definitely would have predated like 3-1 uh, in the favor of rain if, uh, you know, you put a gun to my head. But having this uh, Ash player or like the hit scan player that is just so good and pocketing him to high heaven as well has just worked out so well for the Los Angeles Valiant. And it's going to be really interesting to see what happens or which rosters even play when we get into Busan because Busan that we saw you know in the few matches preceding this has been very very good for Echo and I think right now the Valiant would be tipping their hand if they bring someone else in or maybe KSP is uh, going to be coming out and you put uh, the, excuse me, apply back in for Echo, but they did go 0-2 with apply in, and it wasn't, I'm not saying it was his fault, but I'm saying maybe that's some mentality. Also, KSP has played a little longer, maybe he's making some more calls, some more call outs, it's very possible. We shall see um, as we move to Busan, and then if we get to Mecha Base, I don't think you're going to see Echo anywhere. That one's mostly just been like May Reaper still. Yeah, there's no way. I think we're going back to almost standard comps there with May Reaper, but we'll have to wait and find out. We're going to jump to a quick break, guys. Do not go anywhere. Valiant, one more map away from finding the reverse sweep. We'll see if they can do it after this. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League.
Uh, got you. Welcome back, everybody. Map number five for the, <laughs> the Los Angeles. Do you know facing how up hard the our production team works all day, every day? You get up, be pulling pranks was, on them like it, that. It was, it was our fault. We didn't come on. We admit it. <laughs> We're getting into the final map for this series. Valiant, my goodness, they have turned it up a gear, putting KSP in, won two maps back to back, and potentially a third as well. Rain, though, they need to figure out how to kill KSP, it feels. Well, okay, so this is kind of the overarching thoughts that I had coming into the match, right? I was like, I expect Rain to win, but the, everyone has them as this dominant team, but they're only four and three. The Valiant have looked good against good teams, have lost some close ones, maybe a little better than their record indicates at two and six, and they have flashes if they can have some consistency, they'd be good. But think about this, if the Atlanta Reign lose this match, they will be tied in the standings with the Dallas Fuel. Think about that two weeks ago. Los Angeles Valiant still making a run for it, and all of these matches and uh, matter so much more because we're in the May tournament now. It affects seeding for the May tournament. That tournament is going to give out. We're going to give out some cash money, homie. But it also, if you do well in that tournament, you get bonus points towards the end of the year tournament. So, this new month of May, the the May tournament is really, really important, and you can see teams start to make enormous strides if the meta favors them, if they can adapt quickly, if this valiant team can start pulling off wins and they get a good performance at the end of month tournament, they could turn around the season rather easily. One of the biggest reasons they were playing so well is KSP came in. He is 2-0 in maps today, and he's staying in as we go to Busan. So I maybe we'll see Echo, maybe we won't, but Apply was the Echo ace that they had playing. Yeah, Busan is the map, like you said. And hey, look at that. Something we talked about just before the break. Probably not going to see Echo here. It's going to be a mecha base. You, Probably a little bit more May yeah. Reaper. I mean, from what I saw in the APAC region, it was May Reaper. But you never know. They they don't they don't necessarily translate. There's kind of different scrim schedules for those teams. So we do have somewhat dispergent metas. Um, somewhat the same. We'll see. We gotta wait for the clock to go down. Right now, no one's on a May and no one's on a Reaper. And I think both these teams just want to run what they run. Um, I don't think we're going to see any switches. I think this is straight up what we're going to see coming out. Interesting oh, stuff. Yeah. Maybe they had a pact beforehand. They were gentlemen's like, if we agreement. Go, yeah, gentlemen's agreement. If we go to a mecha base or a map like it, let's play that. I think the pact was more like, hey, no May, right? Let's just not play no May, May anymore. Yeah. No Please May in May. Play. It's no May May. Oh, it's not. It's, yeah, May, May, no May. May, May, no May. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. What a world. If only Solo Q was exactly the same as uh, how these guys are thinking. <laughs> oh, Shaxx must be one bit of Pogba almost. My goodness. Edison? He good? He not good. He, uh, he no have recall. He's got a... What is this? Ring around the rosy. Okay. They eventually decide to part... Much, mutually part ways. Oh, so yeah, much damage. Look at this. Yeah, KSP up on the high ground is just... Uh, uh, not something you really want to deal with. Uh, point capped instantly. As we do see the range just struggling to do anything. Go on. Go on. Headshot him. Oh, Edison. Playing with it does. Fire. He's and got the, the And enormous you have pocket. two supports yeah. basically with you. Yeah. The Briggs there, the Divas there, is just not going to happen. Oh, they're Ooh, <laughs> not where you want to be. Mid-air headshot. The boy likes to aim, and he got no one more. One more for the highlight reel, KSP. Oh, the dynamite. Oh, the BM to finish Edison off with no blinks. Yeah, now this, one, is, just this out. one should be wrapping up. They should just int onto the point, because they're not going to be able to survive this. You're just kind of wasting time at this point. Yeah, even Dogman kind of nading himself. I think that was a little bit... You want to reset ASAP, really. Didn't really find too much about um, yeah. in that fight apart from Alt Charge. You know, I play a ton of Tracer, but I think the, the my favorite sound design in the game is hearing a dynamite blow up and a Tracer scream right afterwards. Because <laughs> the dynamite yeah. sound is so good, and then just hearing the screams, it's actually <laughs> it's very, very fun to hear. Also, like, because I play some Ash too, and it always feels good when you can get a Tracer with that a dynamite explosion. Atlanta oh, can yeah. come back on this full force, though. Nano and Grav are ready to go. Grav can also be comfortable with a Pulse Bomb. We'll see where Bob ends up during this week. What about Bob? What about Bob? That could be a new film, actually. It's an old Presented film. By the Overwatch League. What about Bob? Well, Dreamer, Shax, McGravy, they're going to clean this one up. Again, I love the pick from uh, FRD, but it's just not working out. This double dive tank is just suiting them ever so much better. Yeah, they um, got rocked before they, could even. before they could even use ultimates, right? So the Valiants are still in a really good spot. They're, they're going to have Rally and the Primal here. Atlanta with the advantage on paper, but they have to win this fight. It's the last fight of this stage. 
Oh, McGregor. Oh, he's getting chased away. He hasn't got a uh, mech back yet. There you go. It just ticks over. He's taking a little bit of damage, too. Graviton surge across the map. A beautiful pulse as Massa <laughs> just falls through the ground. Oh, my word. FRD didn't get too much with that either. That Graviton surge a little bit gone to waste. Sharp and Edison are so, so low. Shaq's trying to clean this fight up. There'll be a, a dynamite kill onto Sharp. This is going to be 100 to 0. FRT's on the point alone, no supports to be seen. Dogman's back on the Lucio, but he's not going to be able to do all too much. This is really just to stall out. The Valiant are coming back in the series. <laughs> they now need one more map to find the reverse sweep. Oh Shucks. my goodness. Companion streams in absolute ruins. Preds <laughs> across the board are getting <laughs> destroyed. Yeah, I doubt there were too many 3-2 Andes out there. Shaq stuck Masa and just flushed him down the tube. Like, it goes down there. I would have loved to see, like, a cartoon effect of just Briggs' armor puffing out through the top. <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. But Masa has been getting stuck all day, really. Like, it's been a tough day to be a Brig. It's one of the better targets, actually, in this composition for a Tracer to hit. Oddly enough, you know, Brig used to be just the, the death of Tracer. Took her out of the meta for what felt like years if you played Tracer. But now... Now with the shield health being what it is, you're even fine sticking shields because then you can come back and just rock the brig in the face, but whew, slow moving target if she doesn't have bash. And as you put it, Valiant, one stage away from the reverse sweep over an Atlanta rain team that a lot of people have ranked very highly. You see the rain now just not wanting to take to the skies as, uh, as the Echo as well, Hex. They don't really want to mess with KSP's Ash, it's been so dominant thus far. Double dive tanks as well. Gravy Dreamer going pretty low, my goodness. You've got to be careful though, they can't really take the fight in a, in a close quarter situation because Sharp is on this Reaper. Shax manages to keep people up though in the back line. Not bad at all. Dogman's going to get this Coalescence on very soon, but KSP taking out Edison. Two They're big players two. now for the rain, now down, and they do manage to cap, yes, but at what cost? Valiant are going to be able to cap this one straight away. Um, well, straight away they're going to be able to get the flip. Master ends up falling too. They're going to be able to stagger um, FRD on not quite KSP. Just wants another headshot to his stats. And uh, Valiant taking that um, taking that team fight just so handily as soon as Sharp blew his cooldowns. Yeah, Masa has had enough. He's on Lucio, but he still gets picked down there. The problem with the Lucio is Edison can never take a 1v1 versus Shaxx now. You can never reasonably believe that you're going to have the health pool advantage because you don't have armor packs. Rain still on the brig is going to be feeding in Shaxx. Look, right now, Shaxx has armor. He can be more aggressive. Just hunting down. Whew, that's a big clump of oh, red. And Edison already, already falls to a headshot. And Shaq's being so patient with the pulse. I mean, you might as well if you're going to land him like that. Oh, my word. The, the rain are just falling apart at the seams right now. What you can just imagine. You can just imagine Shaq's like seeing is like, okay, she can't fade away. And then he's waiting to watch the movement and just doing like trigonometry in his head. And like, if I go here, I go there. And then he hits the stick. Shaq is connected with so many of these pulse bomb directs. And now. 50% and counting up for the Valiant making an unlikely comeback. A whole lot of check marks up there. Bob is going to enter the field at some point as well. Every other ultimate you'd want for the Valiant ready. Sharp has moved over to the Reaper. That makes sense. Uh, Edison is going to near Pulse Bomb as well. I think this is kind of a, a comp that you want to move in as fast as you can on. That was perfect position from Lastro. Wow. Support should take notes, that is for sure. Oh, the cop. Not the Coalescence, sorry, it should be coming out soon, you'd hope. A big fire grenade, Dreamer doing so much work to create space, and Sharp's already dead. Edison ends up ending his own life with the Pulse Bomb. Oh dearie me, this is all falling apart once again, and the Rain now have one fight really to do anything. The Valiant are coming as far back as you possibly could. The complete reverse sweep is in their hands, Hex. 10% away now. Their best bet here is speed boost. Maybe, maybe preemptive B just got get a prayer of a death blossom that saves you the fight. They do get the touch. Still not over just yet. Shaxx, I'd love for Shaxx to end this on a false bomb. Shaxx goes false bomb in. That beat's going to be good though. Surging them all forward. Sharp has the blossom as well. They're forcing Valiant away, but Puck Puck goes down to a coach gun. A coalescence will make sure the Valiant can't touch the point for the time being as they do manage to find the flip. They're not out of the woods just yet. And the nice thing is that they were able to save that Blossom. Masa had to use Beat just to give his team a fighting chance. You don't want to take it to spawn with you. They were able to engage, and Valiant's unable Dogman to get dies. out of there quickly enough. Dogman dies. He used that orb, and it went on the wrong side of the wall. Sharp now coming in with the Death Blossom. is going to be able to save the fight for the time being. Oh, my word. Still so close, and Valiant... They do have ults online as well. They got Bob, they got Bomb coming up, they have uh, Primal Rage and the Pulse. 
They can be patient here. They only need one fight. You don't want to start throwing it, throwing this fight away and have to go to a third map. Meanwhile, Shaq's still lurking. You can't go after the Moira if you know she has faith. It's a waste. Yeah, it is. You want to force that cooldown exactly what you want to do. There's Bob on the point. No sleep dart, by, mind you, for the rain. KSP ends up going down. There's self shrug. Bob takes that one. A big stick as well. Shaq kills Dogman, and now Mus is the only healer for the rain. They're slowly but surely bleeding out. This is the damage that they needed. Shaq's and Rain are going to be able to clean up Rain. FRD is going to fall as well. The Valiant are going to find the flip, and OT once again is in their favor. It's ticking down with one person to touch. It's going to be the Tracer. Edison stays alive for the longest time possible, but he has to get off the point soon. No recall available as the Rain make their engagement once again. Primal Rage comes out for Pokepo, but he's going to get instantly slept. Dreamer unleashes one of his own as Edison ends up going down. The nade onto Pokepo sends him basically to the grave. He has to play so passive now. He ends up falling as the Coalescence wasn't quite enough then to heal him up. Dreamer stays alive against all odds and the rain once again in their last stage of this map to try and fight their way back in. Dogman finds Lastro eventually, and the Pulse Bomb from Shax is ready to be unleashed. The beat just in time from Master to try and find a little something extra. The gun down onto FRD might have just done it. They have the Valiant come back with a clean 3-2. The reverse sweep was there. They made it work, and what a series we just witnessed. I mean, I, it's, you could sense it in that very first control map that we played, which was very back and forth, and the Valiant were showing that they had some strategies, they had signs of life, and they've got talent on this roster, and it might just take them a little bit of time to gel. It's very possible that we look back on this Valiant match against Atlanta as a season-defining match if the Valiant can continue to improve week to week. Masa, I think, was not having a good time on that Brigida. He was forced on a Brigida for a while last season, so he's like, ah, and then he moved to Lucio. They looked a little better on the Lucio. KSP played really well. This Valiant team, I mean, it's, the term gets thrown around a lot in sports, and it's almost demeaning at this point, but they're looking a little scary. They're looking like a scary team that you don't really want to play. And is this the real Atlanta Rain power level? They are now 4-4, four and four, so is the Dallas Fuel. The Valiants, 3-6 and six after a shaky start to the season, but they've played teams close. What a match. I don't know what I just saw, but I liked every second of it. All you want to see is the counters coming out for the Valiant. That was it. We saw Apply come in on the Echo, and he did duel out pretty well, but it was KSP that flipped the scales and just turned this whole match on its head. KSP is just an absolute crazy man on the hit scan. It doesn't matter if Widow's banned. It doesn't matter if McCree's banned. If there's a hit scan still available to play, he's playing it. And I love the adaptation, in fact, from um, Rain at the ends of Busan, or just um, in Busan in general, playing the Moira and the, the Lucio to try and speed the Reaper into the back line. Yeah. But the problem is there was so much protection for KSP with armor packs and just everything else under the sun that as soon as you don't kill him, and as soon as he's able to build up Bob as well, the Bob's free because you can't sleep him, and then KSP can take over the game like he's been doing for the last two maps. Well, the issue is they sped in the, the very last fight. They sped into that back line, and they got a kill, but then they all get stuck in the room, and yeah. then you're in a small room with with a, a big mood, and the bomb comes in, and it takes out a couple. Shax absolutely went nuts. He could have been player, on the player of the match based on the last map, but who is our player of the match presented by Xfinity? Our player of the match presented by Xfinity is going to be KSP. Surprise, surprise. I'm not too sure. <laughs> Let's be real. His crit, accu uh, his accuracy in general, and his crit percent is just yeah. egregious. It's An absolute monster on the hero. It's something you almost can't account for, right? You expect an Ash to hit a shot, and you're like, okay, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna be. 85% behind cover if he hits the, the back wheel of my rollerblade, so be it, and then he hits the back wheel of your rollerblade, and you just get rocked. Like, his his Ana gameplay is ridiculous. Uh, definitely worth a watch in the replay viewer if, if you're an aspiring Ana. It made a ton of sense on Hanamura. I think that was like a pocket strat. Like, yeah, uh, Ash on Hanamura, really, really good. But then he played it on maps that you don't always see it played on. It's kind of took the place of a widow on Dorado and also on the Bassan map. Um, yeah, I think he he just redefined some some Ash play there. KSP. I mean, 
I guess the, the, the end point is he's a nut. What a nut. What a nut. A, it, a walnut, if you will. The, the, the biggest of nut. And uh, one, th one thing I would have loved to see actually was Rain um, sub in Baby Bay. Because we had Baby Bay versus yeah. Carpe last week, the Ash, Ash versus Ash. I would have loved to see KSP. And I can imagine we probably will do at some point during the season because uh, McCree and Widowmaker, especially, they're, they're going to be high pick rates regardless. And obviously, mm -hmm. the, the new Hero Pool rules um, have come into effect or will be coming into effect shortly. Um, we will at one point see an Ash v Ash, and if we see Rain play against the Valiant again, KSP versus Baby Bay will be one to watch. Or even KSP versus someone like Carpe. I'm so happy KSP is finally in the league. He's been um, just a superstar player right back from EU Contenders when I was casting him, and him in the league proving his worth just through and through right. it's just been a joy to watch and we started talking about atlanta's having so many damage dealer options but then now you start looking at this this valiant lineup at ksp and ksf proved early in the year like this is a duo to be reckoned with and then Shax had a, an amazing tracer game that was a sick tracer game especially on busan like i would have given him player of the game uh, just based on that player of the match um and then you, you've got Apply, who came in and played his first ever Overwatch League game, and he looked pretty decent on it. I don't think it was his fault they lost the first two matches. He played a pretty solid Echo, and you get him some more experience, get him a little more comfort in the team environment and, and live game action, he could be something else as well. And I, I also mentioned, like, before coming into this, I've been happy with the Valiant support line. I think Lastro gets overlooked a lot as one of the really good new flex supports we have in the league. Tank line is rock solid. There's a lot to like about this Los Angeles Valiant team. Yeah, and going forward, <laughs> they are definitely something to be feared, it feels like. And that's what it feels like. Um, th this this kind of roster structure, I guess you'd say, or roster depth, I think it's what you need currently in the hero pool system in AL is have that DPS depth. And a lot of teams already had that. You have Shock, who's obviously coming up a little bit later, and Valiant are definitely one of those squads, and we also have uh, Rain being one of those squads. They've got a lot of depth in their DPS pool, and I feel that's what it takes to succeed. You've got to think about or well, the way I used to think about it is the amount of heroes that are available uh, for each of the roles. Tank, not many. Support, not many. DPS, a bunch. Like all of them. You, you <laughs> can't be someone. Not, not every day do we see someone like Rascal or Architect who can play seemingly everything under the sun. There is a, a point in time where we see someone like Apply come in, play Echo because he's clearly been grinding that hero a ton. You can yeah. definitely tell in his gameplay. You need those almost two to three hero specialists that come in and just demolish right there's there's no room anymore in overwatch for a single hero specialist of like oh this is our widow player like you have to be widow and mccree and tracer and a bunch of things uh so yeah w with as many dps heroes as you mentioned as many damage heroes as there are i think you need like four guys at the very least not everyone is blessed with like a carpe who i feel that you could put on anything in that damage lineup and get uh, top five performance out of not everyone's Carpe's an MVP candidate every single year. Uh, but you can piecemeal it together. You can find talent in these places. And a lot of people mocked the Valiant at the beginning of the year before letting go of some of these uh, very good pieces that they had. And they made some trades and they made some moves that people thought were questionable. But I think you're starting to see a plan. And when you're a fan of a team, I think the, the thing that always, the only thing that really bums you out is if you see a team that just doesn't look like they have a plan. Like, what, what are you doing? Are you just saving money? What is this? Why are you getting rid of my favorite player? But you're kind of seeing it come together, so you let them have their growing pains. And as I mentioned, if the Valiant start making a decent run to this May tournament, and then to, you know, maybe start picking it up a little bit, you'll go back and you'll look at this game as their defining moment. Absolutely, and we are getting ready for an, uh, an interview with KSP, and so he's just getting set up currently, so we're just waiting for that, just to let you guys know, so you can, we can actually talk to, well, so we can talk to, we, can, we can't, we're not allowed to, um, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, it's, it's Zoe's job, but uh, we, we get to actually see what he feels about uh, the meta and the game as well, because, like I said before, KSP has had um, a rather, I think, I wouldn't say quick, but it, it felt rather quick. Coming from contenders and just being uh, just yeah. absolute powerhouse, and then coming into the league, not performing like crazy, but as soon as he, I felt like he settled in, which is probably this week or potentially the last uh, last time they played, 
he has been able to get into the groove of things. And like I mentioned uh, way, way earlier on, I think it was on Hanamura, um, talking to Pac in 10 a few times, and he just wants to aim. That's all he wants to do. Yeah. Sit there, practice aim. And you can tell as soon as he gets into a comfort zone, because it can be more of a comfort zone thing, just getting your aim and getting warmed up. As soon as you get there, boom, you're performing like this. And I think you have to give some credit to scouting, because that's... That's something that I would look for. What's the drive of this person? What, what do they really want to do? Is he going to go home and just grind aim trainer for 10 hours? Yes, he is. Okay, I could work with that. Yeah, uh, exactly. I, I don't, you know, like I, I can figure out how to use somebody who wants to be the best at their position. And look, I've been the biggest naysayer of like maybe of all the talent group when people talk to me about contenders players. I'm like, yeah, that's great. Let's see what they do an owl. Um, but I'm also one of the quickest to switch over and be like, yeah, that guy's good. He, he did it in Owl, that's fine. Like, because there's, there's some flame outs that have come from contenders are like, oh, this guy's the best contenders player. And then it's like, eh. So I wait to see till they do it on the big stage. This was a big stage, a giant moment. Um, but even early in the year, you could see KSP and KSF. You're like, oh, these guys are, are special for the Valiant. And now they've rounded out the rest of their damage lineup. I think we are ready, though. Uh, we're going to jump over to Zoe with KSP to see and hear his thoughts. We are indeed. Thank you so much, guys. And congratulations to you, KSP, for a phenomenal victory. Thank you. Thank you. Domination. Absolute domination. But first, I need to put you down a little bit. Why in Jeff's name have you guys not played Ash last week? I need to know. Like, last week, everyone played Ash. And we know you guys can play Ash on such a phenomenal level. Where was she last week? What happened? Did we not play Ash last week? No, you did not. I don't even remember what we played, honestly. <laughs> we didn't play much <laughs> Ash if at all. I, I can I can barely remember it. Uh, well, either way, since you're dodging to answer that question, that's <laughs> absolutely okay with me. Uh, let's let's focus on today's match then. Um, Absolute phenomenal. Once you busted out that Ash, it uh, started to really turn in your guys' favor. What was the discussion like at halftime when you were down 0 and 2? Uh, what was the adjustment being made into the second half? Basically, we were struggling diving like their full, full energy Zarya, and he was doing like, he was pretty much hard carrying. So we decided to put me in and play Ash. So it forced them to completely switch the whole like playstyle, and they, they started playing Diva. And from then on, it was just straight domination. I don't know. <laughs> I was free, so. All right. So you that that wasn't a happy accident uh, that uh, they had to switch onto the Diva. Were you at all like what would have been the scenario like if that wouldn't have worked out? Like, did you have another plan somewhere in the back? Anything else you could have done? Um, not really. Maybe I could have played reaper into that i'm not sure like i don't know it just works out <laughs> i mean yeah, it worked out so i guess there's no point in really uh thinking otherwise uh in terms of uh playing the echo yourself we did see you guys uh with a little bit of echo um how hard was it for you guys to implement her into your compositions um to be honest i feel like not many people know actually how to play echo yet like it's still a new hero so we kind of struggled with it at the start and obviously in the match but yeah it's it's a very hard he like hero to play so how much how much did you actually play her coming into this uh, did you had a play anyway like um playing her on ptr day in and out and he was ready for it or did you not really plan on running her that much anyway um honestly we didn't know what to expect like <laughs> A lot of teams wasn't running it, a lot of teams was, but Apply was definitely grinding it, so, well, but yeah, we just ended up not playing it anyway. Oh well, it's good to have it in the back pocket, I guess. Uh, which teams are you guys currently uh, scrimming the most? Um, we scrimmed Shock a few times, Glads, uh, Dallas. Have you guys had any... Difficulties setting up scrims, uh, given how our whole format switched into everyone is working from home situation, and you can't really scrim against all teams. Uh, has a lot of your practice regime changed because of that? Yeah, like there's some odd days where maybe we have one scrim, or like we have to scrim a contenders team and stuff, but it's not that bad. All right, so you still feel like you're getting your the practice you need in order to prepare for each week's matches. Yeah. Right on. Now, uh, generally the season, you guys had a rough start. Um, is there anything specifically you felt after the first few games you really need to focus on uh, 
looking at the later part of the season? Um, I think it's mostly just like confidence because obviously we have like all new players. So I don't know, like just keep playing confident and we should do well in the season, I think. Right on. Yeah, just, just be a little bit more confident or just post diva pictures of you on social media in a very tight diva suit. You know, that, that does up the confidence, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. So it's been working out for you guys. Uh, that's already it for me. I now let you go uh, back and celebrate that victory. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, thank you. Now for everyone at home who is wondering how we actually managed to take this entire Overwatch League and turn it into a completely online run productions. There are countless heroes behind the scenes who are making this possible every show day. So we have a nice feature and you can join us in thanking those heroes who are uh, enabling us to working apart together.